following is a presentation of Cape 11 Sports. The Barstable Red Raiders and the Falmouth Clippers. For almost 100 years, men from these two high schools have met on the football field. The Thanksgiving Day game, the day where most of these games have taken place. There's no need to build interest in this game. The seed is planted in the very young. There are two separate seasons for these two teams. The first nine games is one, and the Barnstable-Falmouth game is the other. Falmouth leads the all-time series 49 to 46. Last year in Falmouth, Barnstable drove down Route 28 and took the trophy back to Barnstable, winning 19 to 6. This year, Barnstable has had a potent running attack with number 44, Jason O'Neill, gaining over 1,000 yards and scoring 14 touchdowns. Barnstable comes into the game 7 and 2. The Falmouth Clippers enter today's game with a 3 and 6 record. But as this rivalry has shown, records mean little in the eventual outcome of this game. Hello everyone and welcome to the continuation of a Cape Cod tradition. Once again it is Thanksgiving and once again it is Barstable and Falmouth. I'm John Butchergrass and it is truly a pleasure to be part of this great game, a game whose rich tradition began in 1895. Joining me on today's telecast will be Mark Hoops. Mark played Division II football out in Ohio at Ashland College. Mark, good to have you here. John, thank you very much. It's great to be here for such a terrific ball game. We are anticipating a lot of good things out of this ball game. Should be a good game to watch. What do you feel some of the keys are right off the bat for Barstable? Focus. Focus for both teams, John. Uh, Barstable comes into this game at 7-2, and, and, and Falmouth comes in at 3-6. And six and, and uh, records don't matter when this game's on the line. I think for the 104th meeting between these two ball clubs, this is going to be a terrific ball game. So stay focused for the whole game, for four quarters. Uh, and if we if we come into a situation where uh, one team lap, lapses in its thinking, then the other team should take advantage of that focus and and uh, and make a turnover or make something happen that's going to score some big points for either ball club. You've played in big games before. What's the mentality? What are these guys thinking about right now as they're stretching on the field? Well, this is this is sort of the rush time. The adrenaline's flowing. It's pumping up. Uh, everything they worked for all season long come de comes down to this ball game, and and uh, so it's important to keep a good mental attitude for this game. Um, and and just the adrenaline is pumping, but stay in control and, and think about your assignments and where you're supposed to block and who you're supposed to cover, and, and, and it'll all come down on the field, and believe me, the players are ready for this one. Okay, so are we, and when we come back, we'll continue our pregame show. We'll take an up-close look at both teams and talk about the keys to the ball game. Stay with us. We'll be back with the Barnstable and Falmouth pregame show. TCI Cape Cod Communications would like to thank the following companies for their sponsorship of this telecast and join them in wishing the Barnstable Red Raiders and the Falmouth Clippers the best of luck in this classic matchup and in 1993. Warren Buick, located at 100 Barnstable Road, Hyannis. Cape Dairy Products Incorporated at 771-4700. Logo Sportswear in the Cape Cod Mall by Woolworths. And Dennis John Formals in Hyannis at 775-3466. Hey, sports fan, Logo Sportswear at the Cape Cod Mall has a terrific selection of authentic college and professional licensed merchandise. Logo has over 350 different styles of hats. Looking for Red Sox jackets, Bruins jerseys, or shark sweats? Go Logo. Whether it's the Final Four, Super Bowl, or the Olympics, Logo Sportswear has collectibles for you. From children to adults, Logo Sportswear can outfit just one or a whole team. So when you want your favorite sports team or player, go Logo and stop in today. Welcome back to Leo Shields Field, site of this year's Barnstable Falmouth Thanksgiving Day game. Well, what can we expect from this year's contest? Well, for one thing, for Falmouth, it's been a season filled with injuries. And for Barnstable, the season has come down to two things, a great offensive line and running back Jason O'Neill. The pregame focus of today's Thanksgiving Day game between Barnstable and Falmouth has been the running game of Barnstable. Their key is a senior offensive line and a superbly gifted tailback. Number 44, Jason And preventing long runs from O'Neill will be Falmouth's key. Oh, just to try to not give him any seams in, uh, on the line because if you penetrate and you give him a seam, he can take it and go. So our key is to 
keep a front wall and not, not create a seam. He's got two things going for him. He's got great quickness. Um, his ability to get started is as good as anybody I've seen in the 12 years I've been coaching. Um, he just, from the, his seven-yard depth of tailback to the point of the line of scrimmage, he's as quick as anybody I've seen. Because of Barnstable's offense, the defense has been overlooked, but they will be dealing with offensive weapons as well today, like quarterback Joe Kelly. I've been very impressed with the quarterback. He's done a great job. Uh, Kelly, number 10, has just been outstanding the whole year. I mean, with all the switches in personnel, and that's not easy for a quarterback to deal with, especially working with different tailbacks and running backs throughout the year. And he's looked very sharp. Uh, he throws the ball very well. He's very dangerous when he gets out in the perimeter. Um, Joe Kelly, do you need a big game out of him offensively? Yes, we do. You know, he's our rhythm. Uh, if he's on, we're on, and we move the ball. So, you know, that's, that's going to be a big key for tomorrow. I think our physical talents are equal to anybody within our league this year. I don't think that on paper the ten teams that we had scheduled uh, and we played, I don't think any of them had physical dominance over us. I think that we could compete physically. The difference in some of our games was the emotional level we played at. And I think the same is going to hold true this Thanksgiving Day. If we can play at a proper emotional level, I think that we can be successful. And so there you have it. Once again, it's time to play football. All the talk is over for Falmouth and Barnstable. And when we come back from this commercial break, we'll have the opening kickoff between the Barnstable Red Raiders and the Falmouth Clippers. TCI Cape Cod Communications would like to thank the following companies for their sponsorship of this telecast and join them in wishing the Barnstable Red Raiders and the Falmouth Clippers the best of luck in this classic matchup end in 1993. Noman Copy, 94 Barnstable Road, Hyannis. Bell Tower Mall, Route 28, Centerville. The Law Offices of Attorney Don Weber and Puritan Pontiac Isuzu GMC Trucks, Yarmouth Road, Hyannis. Whether you live or just play on the Cape, signs are everywhere leading the way to recreation and relaxation. But sometimes it can all be broken with startling impact. The law offices of attorney Don Weber and Hyannis concentrate on personal injury litigation. A call to attorney Don Weber doesn't cost you anything. Not calling could. Because when you're entitled to rightful compensation, it pays to avoid the wrong signs. Attorney Don Weber, 687 West Main Street, Hyannis, across from Barnstable High. Well, Mark, the rain continues to fall. It's falling harder now than it has all morning. And as you mentioned, that's going to play a factor, no doubt, in this outcome of this game. Sean, it's, it boils down to a, a seven and two team battling a uh, three and six team, and nobody cares about the rain. Nobody cares about uh, the, the, the factors, and even though they will happen, the adrenaline's pumping now. It's right before kickoff. And let's get ready to rumble. All right. Well, of course, as we mentioned, this series began in 1895, the Thanksgiving Day games began in 1924. This is the 104th time they've met 
Falmouth leads the all-time series. 49 wins to 46. There have been eight ties. Now, overall in the Thanksgiving series, which, as you mentioned, began in 1924, Falmouth also leads that series 32 to 29. There have been four ties there. Last year, Barstable won at Falmouth 19 to 6. The Red Raiders have won all three games that Spanky Demanche has been here. He's yet to lose to Eddie Winslow, the coach of Falmouth. While we're set to go here, just about ready to kick off. Falmouth and Barnstable getting ready to get underway. Number 32, Mike Swift, he does the place kicking and he does the kickoffs as well. He's waiting for a dry ball, and which is going to be also a, a concern today for both teams. And Mark, I think the passing game may have just gone out the window. That could be a uh, very, very good possibility, John, with the wet weather. Uh, ball control is a must for both teams. And I think that uh, one of the most important factors of the day's ball game is to stay in control of the football. The football is going to be wet, so let's keep it on the ground and, and keep it safe. Because if you go up in the air, you're dealing with a slippery ball, and it's like throwing a bar of soap sometimes. Uh, and I know uh, when you throw something slippery uh, with the magnitude of picking up yardage for uh, the offensive team, you may run into problems with a wet ball. Like turnovers. Mike Swift getting ready to kick off. Back deep for the foul with the Clippers. Number 34, Chris McDonald. He's maybe their best offensive threat. He can break it long. He's done it all year long. Kevin Madero's number 32 is to his left. Mike Swift getting ready to go. A pretty good crowd here despite the bad weather conditions. Swift getting ready to kick off. And for the 104th time, it is Barstable and Falmouth. A very short kickoff. The ball will bounce along at the 25-yard line. Picked up right there by M McDonald. He's up the middle. He breaks around across the 35 to the 40. Out to the 42-yard line. McDonald returned the kickoff back to the 42. So right off the bat, good Brought field position AJ for Langston. the Falmouth Clippers. They're at the 42-yard line. A super seam by the Falmouth special teams there on the uh, kickoff return team. Uh, right up the middle, uh, and uh, the blocking the was there. And, and a good gain and good field position, which is most important in this first drive of the ball game for the Clippers. The Falmouth offense has eight seniors and three juniors. They're led by quarterback Joe Kelly, number 10. He really drives this offense. Coach Eddie Winslow told me yesterday they need to have a good game out of him to have a good game. Wishbone formation. Kelly calling signals. Barnstable has nine guys up tight. We have movement on the offensive line. Looks like it'll be against the Falmouth Clippers. So already, Mark, I think we see the teams bunching up. They know that it's going to be hard to throw the ball, so they're going to bunch up the middle. And the running game is especially important now with the Clippers. Uh, a lot of dives up the middle, a lot of traps, off tackles, and maybe some sweeps to the, to the strong side of the field. So let's see if the running game comes out. Adrenaline again is pumping, and and adrenaline means that uh, players are up for this game more than ever. And uh, it, a factor is shown uh, as of now with, with uh, the Clippers jumping off sides on the first play. First and 15, Mark. Joe Kelly, here he comes. He has Federico Jordan, number 28, Kevin Maderos, and Chris D'Amatos. D'Amatos is the wingback. Again, bunched up in the middle. We have a fumble on the field right away and another flag down. Looks like, Mark, once again, we had movement. So right off the bat, the with the bad weather, perhaps the game plans have already changed, Mark, minutes before game time. And all of a sudden now they're doing different things and they haven't made adjustments yet. Two offside penalties in a row, John. Uh, a costly 10 yards were the penalties instead of first and 10 from the four, or 35. It's first and 20 now from the 25. 32. 32-yard line, actually. It's tough to see those numbers a little bit down there, but they, th they start at the 42-yard line, took the kicker off. Now 10 yards, the penalties, it's first and 20, and teams do not want to do this. Falmouth and Barnstable with this kind of weather. Again, Kelly will try for the third time to get a successful snap. This time he does. The handoff is to the fullback, or to the tailback, rather. Number 35, Josh Mint for the ball Josh carrier. Mint, number 35, has a couple yards, right but the Barnstable defense Justin is there. Ball. Pick up of about maybe two yards. We'll call it second and 18. Nine and a half minutes to go. Opening quarter. Barnstable and Falmouth. The offensive line for Falmouth. They have Jason Arthur at left tackle. Chris Greeley at left guard. Scossi Gregoriadis at center. Larry Ferreira is the right guard and at right tackle. Justin Domingos. The backs and receivers. Joe Kelly, the quarterback. Federico Jordan. Kevin Maderos. Chris D'Amatos. Mike Rose is the wide receiver. Steve Flamino is the tight end. Second down, 18. Ball on their own, 34. The foul with the Clippers. Now they spread out the offense. They have four receivers. Number 26, Chris D'Amatos goes in motion. Kelly, the handoff up the middle. Taken there by number 44 and stopped after a gain of about a yard. Dave Valesig up the middle. But the Barnstable defense has been there. And Mark, with the formation that the Barnstable showing with 10 guys right there, you can't run up the middle. John, it's absolutely uh, the hardest thing to do. 
Uh, they're insisting on uh, foul with the and Clippers having a running game and not allowing them to pass, even though they had uh, two receivers on the outside uh, of the offensive Third line. I think it's uh, important now to at least make up some yards to try to get in the first down area. Eight and a half to go, first quarter. Four wide receivers for Joe Kelly. Slot back to his left. He rolls out to his left. Looking left. Throws there. It's incomplete in the flat. Ball is tipped up in the air. Almost intercepted, but it goes out of bounds. He was looking in the left flat. But the ball goes incomplete. And after the first series, after picking up the two penalties, Thalmuth will have to punt. John, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things that we have to think about up here in the booth is uh, watching these two teams go at it with each other is the game is going to be decided on the offensive and defensive lines. If, if the traction isn't good, the running game won't be good. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens from now on. But early in the game, uh, players are slipping and sliding and not able to make the good gains in the, in the offensive and defensive lines line that the offensive plan uh, well, enables yeah, them to do. Chris Amatos was on the punt. He just punted 24 yards. Scott Rose made a fair catch, so Barnstable will take over. First and 10 on their own 39. Of course, the story this year for the Red Raiders, a great offensive rushing attack led by their offensive line. C.T. Olander at right tackle. He's the biggest at 6'4", 270. Matt Bunnell at right guard. Corey Scrubs the center. Mike Donovan at left guard. Mike Kennedy at left tackle. Let's see if they go to O'Neal right away or perhaps play action fake. Joe Kennedy is the fullback. He's a great blocker. Mickey Fine, the quarterback, you see him there. He's calling singles out. Looks like he may be calling stuff at the line of scrimmage. Let's see what happens. Fine. Back to pass. They do. They go in the flat. It is complete out there to Chris Driscoll, but he know he drops the ball. Pass incomplete. The Driscoll, incomplete. So, Mark, right off the bat, they did go with a play action fake. I thought they may do that. Boy, what a change in game plan that we anticipated, John. Uh, uh, going to the air right up top. But I think if you're going to go the air, go the air in the first quarter, score some points, make some good yardage gains, and then control the ball. Okay, so make it second and ten now. Mickey Fine, the quarterback. Scott Rose is now in the backfield along with Kennedy. You see O'Neill. He lines up eight yards behind center. The give to O'Neill off the right side. He has running room across the 40, across the 50. He's in foul the territory. The 35, the 30, down near the 20. He's breaking it. He couldn't go all the way. He's out of bounds at the six-yard line. So the very first carry of the game, Jason O'Neill goes 55 yards deep in the Falmouth territory. It's first and goal for the Red Raiders. What a terrific trap play for O'Neill. Those four, off four out of the five offensive linemen are seniors. They've been in this game before. They know the pressure and the adrenaline's pumping. They're opening the holes in a beautiful off trap play for O'Neill, who gained I don't know, 60, 65 yards on that one single play. C.T. Olander, the biggest of the offensive linemen, and Matt Bennell made the block to spring O'Neill free. So first and goal for Barnesville. They mark it at the seven-yard line. Now time is called. And first and goal to go at the eight-yard line. Officials timeout, and looks like some a towel on the field. He'll take that and throw it out. 7.49 to go. First quarter action. First and goal for Barnesville about the seven-yard line. O'Neal broke the first time he touched the ball. Fine calling signals. Once again, O'Neal deep setback. Kenny to his right. Fine. Pitch right to O'Neal. He has running room. He's hit hard there and stopped for no gain. A great hit there. Carried. Brought down by Todd Number 43, Lewis. Todd Lewis made the nice one-on-one tackle. What a terrific hit by Lewis. Came, Came up, kept his position, and goal to goal maintained to both feet on the ground, and made a nice pop on O'Neal for a loss. Let's take a look at Barnstable's backs and receivers. Mickey Fine, the only sophomore to start in this game. The rest of the players on both teams are juniors and seniors. Jason O'Neill and Joe Kennedy in the backfield. Scott Rose is your one wide receiver. He can throw from that position. Chris Driscoll and Duke and Sherwood is the tight end. Second and seven for Barnstable. I formation. Kevin Houston, the tailback now for the Red Raiders. Back to pass goes fine. He looks in the end zone. Alley oop to Driscoll. He's there. And it is a incomplete pass. He's out of the end zone. Driscoll thought he had it. But the official has ruled that he's out of bounds. So Barnesville took O'Neill out of the game in that sequence, put Kevin Houston as a tailback, and they went to throw the ball there, Mark, on second Third and seven. Down. Terrific, terrific play, even though uh, the, the receiver was out of bounds, but a good call by the official right there on the line, seeing that both feet did not get in, in the touchdown uh, in the end zone area. Terrific, terrific call, but terrific play. Too bad that it didn't, they didn't score six points on the play. 6.57 to go, first quarter. Barnesville will call a timeout. Mickey Fine, the quarterback, doesn't like what he sees. So, with that in mind, we'll take a break now. 6.57 to go here in the first quarter. We have no score as Barnstable threatens. 
TCI Cape Cod Communications would like to thank the following companies for their sponsorship of this telecast and join them in wishing the Barnstable Red Raiders and the Falmouth Clippers the best of luck in this classic matchup and in 1993. Bon Repose, 106 Bassett Lane, Hyannis. Town Taxi, call 771-5555. Logo Sportswear, located in the Cape Cod Mall by Woolworths. And Dick Beard Chevrolet Geo Subaru, Ridgewood Ave, Hyannis. Of all the gifts you can give her, none is as precious as the Lane Cedar Chest. Because it's the one that holds everything else that's precious. It's a gift that will last a lifetime. And every time she opens it, she'll think of you. Beautiful Lane Cedar Chest, priced from $199.95, with over 50 styles from which to choose. Available at Bun Repose in three great locations. Welcome back to Leo Shields Field. We have no score in the first quarter, but Barnstable is threatening. They are on the Falmouth seven-yard line. Jason O'Neill got there by a 53-yard run. After O'Neill was stopped on first and seven, Barnstable will try to pass on second and seven. It's now third and seven. Mickey Fine goes in motion. The snap back to Rose. Rose rolls out to the left, throws towards the end zone. Fine looking for the ball. He can't make it. A flag is down. We'll have pass interference. The penalty on the play. Scott Rose. Rose is the backup quarterback. They do this the once in a while where they'll place. snap him the ball. That time they put the quarterback fine in motion. He was the intended receiver. What, what a terrific trick play by the Red Raiders. Fooling the Clipper defense. Even though the man was covered, there was pass interference, a, a super call by the officials. Let's hear the call. Well, we'll see the call there. We won't hear it. Pass interference on Falmouth. That gives Barnstable the automatic first down. Pass interference on the defense. First down. So Barnstable gets the break right away. We can see the weather playing a factor. It's very difficult to throw the ball. And besi first, besides and that long run by O'Neill, Felmuth held O'Neill on his one other attempt. So we'll see if Barnes Ronaldo says, hey, let's give the ball to Jason four times to see what happens. Very fortunate to get the pass interference, the Red Raiders, because now they have first and goal. Automatic first down on pass interference, John. First and goal at the three. Let's see if they give the ball to O'Neill. Just stuff it down the throat. O'Neill has the ball up the middle. He has room, but he's stopped hard at the one yard line and driven back. O'Neill carried for Barnstable. Initial hit was by Good tackling Valesig. by the Falmouth Clippers on that play. David Valesig was there. Also, Josh Mantha, safety, came up and hit O'Neal hard. He may have picked up a yard to the two-yard line. We'll call it second and goal at the two. 6.25 to go. I'm John Butchergross along with Mark Hoops bringing you the 104th edition of the Barnstable-Falmouth rivalry. Second down. Now they give to O'Neill on first down. Let's see if they keep going to it. They're only two yards from the end zone. They have three more tries to get it. I formation. Rose in the backfield once again. Kennedy is to the left. Let's see if they go left. No, they go to Kennedy, the fullback up the middle, and he's in for the score. So Joe Kennedy, number 43, usually blocks for Barstable, but that time the quick hitter up the middle, he saw it daylight, down, put it into the end zone, and Barstable scores first. They lead 6 to nothing with 6.04 to go. The first touchdown for Kennedy on the year mark. A quick dive right up the middle. Very, very productive for the Red Raiders. Again, the offensive line doing the job down under, bringing the defensive line off their feet, getting the holes open for Kennedy, who scores the first touchdown for the Red Raiders this morning. 6 nothing at 6.04 the first quarter. Mike Swift is the place kicker and Mark we haven't talked about it yet but of course place kicking will definitely be tough today let's see what happens on the point after touchdown the snap is good the hold is good Swift's kick is up and it is no good wide to the left so right away we see where no this bad weather causes Five many problems and nothing. place kicking is not excluded from those problems you know uh, it may be a good idea for the Red Raiders to think about uh, on future possessions if they score to go for the two yeah it's almost like a better chance it's almost a better chance exactly John <laughs> So 6.04 to go here in the first quarter. Falmouth once again will receive the kickoff. The class of 82 will be holding their reunion at the Tara Hotel. John, I think if uh, Falmouth is going to uh, stay with the Red Raiders in this ball game, something has to happen on this drive right here with this kickoff. Okay, the kickoff is taken there. By number 32, Kevin Medeiros, he's across up the middle. He has plenty of daylight, but he's stopped there as he heads across midfield into varsable territory. Medeiros almost Kevin broke Medeiros it. Medeiros returned the ball 
Scott the Rose there on the tackle, the and twice now, Falmouth has been successful with their special teams. Scott Exactly what the Clippers Rose. needed. They needed the shot in the arm, the a good, ki two good kickoff returns the by, by the Clippers. Seven. Let's see if they can put something get to uh, together. Okay, the first time, Mark, of course, the two penalties stalled them. They started at first and 20. This time, see if they can get things going at first and 10. 5.55 to go, first quarter. Barnes to the lead, six and nothing. The rain continues to fall harder here at Leo Shields Field. Wishbone formation. Kelly, the signals. The give is to the tailback, Medeiros. He's over the right side. He has room, and he has good yardage. Out across, carry. down to the 42-yard right line Sherwood. of Barnstable. A gain of about five yards. Duke and Sherwood on the tackle. Number 32, Kevin Medeiros. Medeiros. John, any team in this ballgame, either the Clippers or the Red Raiders, on first down, if they can average four or five yards, they can win the ball game. Gain of three, be second and seven. Gain of three they'll give him. It'll be second and seven at the 43 of Barnstable. Coach Ed Winslow for Falmouth in his seventh year. He won his first three meetings against Barnstable, but since Spanky DeManch has been there, he's lost three in a row. Second and seven at the 43. Kelly once again spreads it out. They're shifting their offensive schemes up. Kelly over center. The give to the fullback. Up the middle for a couple of yards. It'll Valesic, be third Gary. down and five. Dave Valesic, number 44, up the middle. And it's just right on the down, third down right situation. Down. Of course, third down situations, Mark, are always and important in any football game. Third and five, John. Uh, stay on the ground uh, or, or throw the ball. I mean, what you, very tough with, with, the, with the rain coming down as hard as it is. So the band strikes up. Their usual chorus here, trying to lift up the Barnstable defense. Third and five of the 42. Once again, Falmouth spreads it out. They have four wide receivers and a slot receiver. No backs in the backfield for Kelly. They're going to throw the ball, it appears. Kelly rolls out to the left. He shovels it up, forward. The ball is tipped around, incomplete. That's an incomplete pass, of course. So the Falmouth Clippers went for the shovel pass. And now, pass. also with a bad weather mark, down. We could have punting situations, and it's interesting to see if they go for it, and the coaches will have decisions to make there. A big defensive stand for the Barnstable Red Raiders, John. Uh, the coaches of Falmouth have to be saying to themselves, what do we have to do? Uh, the conditions are bad. The field is getting worse. Uh, if they can punt this ball, oh! It's a horrible punt, Mark. It goes out of bounds. Looks like at the 25-yard line. So it's a 17-yard punt, and that's where maybe teams might want to go for it on fourth down instead of having awful punts. Barstable's very fortunate because they could have punted. The Clippers could have had that punt land inside the 10 somewhere and be downed, and the, Clip, uh, uh, and the Clippers would have had the Red Raiders uh, deep in their own territory. Instead, they're in decent field position at the... Uh, right at, almost at the 25-yard uh, line. Let's take a look at the Falmouth defensive line. Steve Domino is one defensive end. Steve Pamino, Sean Walker, Justin Domingos, Psychic Greg Reitis, and Chris Greeley, the defensive end. Here's Barnstable, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Fine, gives to O'Neill. O'Neill up the middle. He stopped after a gain of two. He's hit hard there Dropped by, by number 74, Saki Gregoriatis. Saki's real name is Socrates, so we've got some Greek oh, power going out there. For foul with the linebackers for the Clippers. Defensively, the linebackers, David Valesic, number 48, and Larry Ferrader, number 57. The secondary, Chris McDonald, Joe Monahan, Guy Miller, and Joss Mann. So it'll be second down to nine. We'll give O'Neill one yard on that carry. Second nine in for Barnes to the balls on their own 26-yard line. Kennedy, Rose, and O'Neill all in the backfield. Play action fake. Fine to the flat. Looking. For number 21, Ian McAllister. Fast to McAllister. But he can't find him, and right away, find his own a couple balls, Third and he's down. yet to get a lot on him. Of course, he had the drop by Driscoll, so they go for the pass on second and nine. Well, the ball is wet, and the field is wet. And when those, when those two combinations come together, uh, sure footing is not to be found on this field today. Really, must be very precise in the passing game. Must throw the ball well. The, like Mark mentioned, the footy must be there for the receiver to be in position to make the catch. So third and nine. Now, here's Barnstable's third down situation. A passing down or maybe a draw to O'Neal. We'll see what they do. 3.42 to go first quarter. Fine. The draw play to O'Neal. Up the middle. He has room. He cuts to his right, but he's met there by a gang of tacklers. And he, after only a gain of three, he has stopped there by the Falmouth Clipper defense. So the Falmouth Clipper carry. defense, except for the one long run, has looked pretty strong. Right down Justin Domingos at nose guard. The nose guard for the Clippers has done a uh, terrific job thus far. Let's see, you can, see if he can maintain that and control Walker. he's had for the middle of the uh, defensive line for the Walk Clippers down. for the whole game. Just a super game thus far. Staying down, plugging holes in the middle. There's no room to run for the Red Raiders. Fourth down, Barnes will punt. Swift is the punter. Kevin Medeiros is back deep for the Clippers. Here's the punt by Swift. 
Not bad in his condition. It's taken there by number seven, Guy Miller, who fielded the ball kind of inconspicuously, Guy but he Miller. made the catch and then was hit hard by number 12, Scott Rose. Return so Falmouth will take over. Good field 42. position at their own 42-yard line. First and 10 there, 2.56 to go. If you're just joining us, Barnstable scored first. They had a long run by Jason O'Neill of 53 yards down to the 7-yard line. And eventually, after a pass interference on third down, Joe Kennedy, the fullback, scored his first touchdown of the year on a quick hitter. Barnstable missed the extra point, and it's 6-0. Barnstable air in the first quarter with 2.56 to go. Joe Kelly comes out first and 10. This time he spreads it out on first down. The rain falling harder here at Leo Shields Field. In motion. Goes number 26, Chris D'Amatos. The pitch out to D'Amatos. He has running room across midfield to the 45 before he's tackled there by Scott Rose. First and 10, Fallon's Clippers into Barnstable territory. They'll have the ball first and 10 at the Barnstable 42. A nice block by Mike Andrews, the split at number 22 at 5'10", 140. Uh, went outside, made a good block to open up the hole for the quick screen. So let's take a look at the Barnstable defense now. They have six seniors and five juniors. Peter Sullivan, the defensive end. Matt Bunnell at tackle. Mike Donovan is the nose guard. Justin Cazal at the other tackle. And John Hill at the defensive end. The linebackers are Dugan Sherwood, Kevin Houston, and Andy Milk. The secondary, Chad Treveri, Chris Driscoll, and Scott Rose. First and 10 for Falmouth at the 43. Every possession thus far, John, the Clippers have had good field position. Back to pass goes Kelly. He looks for the quick hitter, decides to run it. He has a little bit of room, but then he's hit there by middle linebacker Kevin Houston for Kelly a gain of about two yards. Houston. It'll be second down and eight. We have 2.10 to go here in the first quarter. The rain now yeah, finally begins nine. to subside a tad here. The field is very wet, and as Mark mentioned, the middle of the field will especially get damaged. I think that's a big factor in today's ball game, John. We mentioned it before. Let's see if they can run some plays, the Clippers, that is, and, and gain some ground. They've got uh, two first downs in a row. It's second and uh, eight from the Red Raider. 41-yard line. 41-yard line. You're welcome. Second and eight at the 41. Two men in motion here. That is, I see a penalty, and the flag is called, and Kelly is sacked. So once again, confusion on the Falmouth side of the ball. They had two men in motion. And, of course, you can't do that. That'll be illegal motion, a five-yard penalty. And once again, Falmouth puts themselves in a tough situation. They had second and eight. Now they face second and 13. A minute and a half to go in the first quarter. Six-nothing, Barnstable. Barnstable, of course, 4-0 and at home this year. So they've played very well here at Leo Shields Field. Seven and two on the year. The Clippers at three and six. So far, the wet turf has not affected Jason O'Neill. So Barnstable declines the penalty to make it third and nine. They'll take the loss of a yard. Obviously, the play must have gone through. I thought they'd call that play dead when two guys were going to motion. Well, they let the play stand. Well, Barnstable the took the yard loss and the down. So it's third and nine for Falmouth. A minute and a half to go in the first quarter. Ball on the 40. We'll call it the 41 of Barnstable. Joe Kelly, the quarterback, number 10. Has four wide receivers. Medeiros in the backfield. Number 26, Damatos, goes in motion. They give up the middle to Maderos. He's hit hard there by Kevin Houston after a gain of about five. That will set up fourth and five. And after last punt, you'd think that Falmouth may go for it this time. Three penalties have killed them, John. Uh, and, of course, Barnesville has had no penalties yet, and the score is 6 nothing. A minute to go. The clock is winding down. Looks like Falmouth will punt. I guess they want to keep Barnesville pinned here in the first half. 38-yard line. Back deep, Scott Rose for Barnesville. Good clean snap. The punt, it's a good one. Toward Rose. Rose gonna let it bounce. He hopes it goes into the end zone, but it won't. It will but picked up there. And Falmouth will make the tackle. The ball will be down at the two-yard line because of forward progress. So a risky play right there. Number 46, Dugan Sherwood picked up the rolling ball there, Mark. Really no re no need to do that. Extremely risky play on a ball that close in the end zone. Uh, picking it up on the two-yard line and trying to run it out. Um, the coaches, the basketball coaches, have to be thinking, what is he doing? <laughs> exactly, but at least Barstable still has possession of the ball, but Falmouth's Falmouth strategy right there worked off. They have Barnstable pinned down deep in their own territory. The ball's on the two-yard line, 36 seconds ago in the first quarter. 
So Barnstall now wants to prevent the safety. Eye formation. O'Neal is pretty deep in this situation. They give to Kenny the fullback. A good call. Barrels through up the middle. Before out towards three, the seven-yard line. The ball carrier. A gain of about five. That'll set up second and five. Tackle so you had to see that happen. O'Neal was too deep in that situation to get the ball. A pretty safe play, though, John. Uh, first and ten, deep Game in your own four, territory. Uh, work with what, what's your bread and butter, and that's the ground game. Get five yards of play and, yard and uh, get out of that area. Second and five. This will be the last play of the first quarter. Mickey Fine, the quarterback, has, once again, O'Neal his tailback, Kennedy his fullback. Rose also in the backfield. Now we have a whistle. And that will end the first quarter. So Barnstable will run out the first quarter. That's the end of the first quarter with Barnstable leading. And when we come back, nothing. they'll have the ball second and six on their own seven. So after one quarter of play here at Leo Shields Field in the 104th meeting of Falmouth and Barnstable, it's the Barnstable Red Raiders on top, six to nothing. TCI Cape Cod Communications would like to thank the following companies for their sponsorship of this telecast and join them in wishing the Barnstable Red Raiders and the Falmouth Clippers the best of luck in this classic matchup and in 1993. Hyannis, Texaco, Route 132 Hyannis, Cape Cod Community College. For more information, call 362-2131. Bell Tower Mall, Route 28 Centerville, and the Law Offices of Attorney Don Weber. Holiday shopping is so convenient at the Bell Tower Mall. Choose some select beef at Bell Tower Beef. Fresh lobster at the Lobster Trap and specialty foods from Cape Cod Natural Foods to gifts for the home and loved ones available at Country Star, Annabelle's, and the Fabric Studio. For those special holiday parties, head to Pro Cuts and Tiffany's for a festive new look. On Sundays, enjoy brunch at Kerrigan's with Santa and his helpers. This holiday, put the Bell Tower Mall first on your shopping list. Route 28, Centerville. And at the Let's go down to Suzanne Mikowski for a report. Thanks, John. According to head trainer John Negri of Falmouth, Chris McDonald heard his left knee pop, and he's been taken to the hospital, to Falmouth Hospital. They don't know what it is, whether it's torn cartilage or what. Uh, he has been injured before. It was healthy, got healthy to play in today's game. Um, it is a big loss for them. They, uh, he is their running back and also their punter, so tough loss for them. Back to you, John. So with second and six on their own seven, of course, coaches never like turnovers, but in this particular situation, of course, is the last thing the Barnstable coaches want. Second down for Barnstable. They give to O'Neill over the left side. He has some running room. His great outside speed gives him that room. He's across the 30. He'll stop, cut it back up, and get knocked out of bounds after a great run. Knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard line. So a 23-yard run for O'Neill. That's the great speed of O'Neill there. That, that, that defender for Falmouth had a good angle on him, but he, his speed took him right to the outside. And, and O'Neill is not afraid to take a hit either. Instead of going out of bounds, he goes right into the shoulder pad of the Falmouth defender. Ball is marked on the 31-yard line. So O'Neill's two runs, one set up a touchdown. This one gets them out of the hole and at least takes the pressure off the team for not committing, to not commit a turnover inside their own 10-yard line. Of course, they never do, but definitely in that situation, they do not want to. First and 10 after 31, 9.44 to the go. Barnstable leads 6 to nothing. The give to O'Neill over athlete. the left side. He's out across the 35, down at the 37-yard line. Six more right yards for Jason O'Neill. And so far, the left side on this drive has been good for Jason O'Neill. Of course, on that left side for Barnstable, Mike Donovan at guard, and Mike Kennedy is the tackle. 9.20 to go. Second and four. Ball on the 37. Barnstable zone 37. They were pinned back after a good punt by Falmouth, but the long run by O'Neill has got them out of that situation. Now they have some room to work with. O'Neill the tailback once again. Play action fake. Fine back to pass. Looking to the right. Wide open. Ian McAllister makes the catch into Falmouth territory. Dragged down at the 40-yard line. First down. Barnstable Mark the first completed pass of the day for the Red Raiders. What a great time to do it, though. Uh, a great play action fake and a throw to the flanker on the outside. Now, Falmouth has been running a 5-3 defense. They might want to change their defense around since uh, the ground game has been so successful against uh, their, their front five people thus far, John. Right. First and 10 for the Red Raiders at the 40-yard line of Falmouth. Mickey Fine, the sophomore quarterback, looks fine so far. The give to O'Neill up the middle. He cuts right, but he's hit hard there by David Valesic, the linebacker, and he may lose a yard. It'll be second down and 11. 
Chris Freely. Loss of one to be second and 11. Second down and 11 for the Barnstable Red Raiders. As we mentioned, Mickey Fine, the only sophomore starter in the game, but so far he has looked fine, as we mentioned. Don't mean to drive home the point, but he looks fine out there and is uh, definitely composed. Once again, he goes in motion. A snap back to Rose. The option left. The pitcher O'Neill. His feet around the outside. He gets in the 40 to the 35. Hit hard there and down to the 34-yard line. We'll have a flag on the play. A late hit. The You're going to add 15 more yards. So what a bounds. peculiar play, Mark. They put the quarterback in motion. By Monahan, snap to the tailback, Rose, who runs an option to the other running back. And a gain of 12 yards for the Red Raiders. Uh, if it works, stay with it. Right. And, of course, as well as Barnstable runs the ball, you do not want to give them 15 free yards in that situation. First down. So the late hit gives the Red Raiders 15 more yards. And, Mark, one thing the weather has done is kind of dampened the emotions of everyone involved. And the one thing Falmouth needed in this game was high emotion to get the intensity to, to kind of close the gap. Well, definitely the, the weather has taken the fans out of the game. Uh, the, the emotion on the Falmouth sideline is, is from the players only, and, and hopefully the fans will get in this ball game. Mickey Fine back to pass. The lob downfield is incomplete. He was looking for Chris Driscoll. Another pass interference. That one was That's close. Really on the play. Fine's pass to Driscoll was incomplete. So on the first down play, Fine went for the alley-oop to Chris Driscoll. It looked like both players went up for the ball at the same time, Mark, but they called the, the uh, interference. That's a tough call, yeah. uh, John. That's a tough call. Both players are up for the ball at the same time. Uh, th that's tight. That, 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 that's an iffy call, John. Okay, Mark. First and ten. Automatic first down. Here's the penalty. Holding defense. So they called the hold. I guess they thought he grabbed his shirt. So Barnstable is in great position to score once again. They're just inside the 10-yard line. It will be first and goal. They cannot pick up the first down. 7.49 to go. The Red Raiders lead 6 to nothing. The rain has just about stopped now. Just a light mist falling on the field. First and goal to go at the ninth. Kennedy, Ian McAllister, O'Neill in the backfield. Kennedy moved and will have a flag on the play. A penalty on the play as Kennedy carried. That play will be Jack called dead. Five-yard penalty on the Red Raiders. John, remember, anytime a penalty situation comes up and, and a play happens, a penalty flag is, is thrown. It's a free play still. Illegal Make something happen. Uh, and see what result you get out of it and then consider the penalty. So it'll be a five-yard penalty on the Red Raiders. Falmouth is contemplating whether or not to accept it, and it looks like they will. Five yards. Ball back on the 14-yard line. The 14-yard line. First and goal for the Red Raiders. 7.46 to go. They lead 6 to nothing. Mickey Fine, the quarterback under center. Kennedy wants to get the fullback. O'Neill, the tailback. Chris Driscoll is out to the right, number 34. Fine, back to pass, the reverse to Rose. He's going to throw the ball towards the end zone, and it'll be intercepted there at the two-yard line. Fine pass. Number we'll seven, Guy Miller Guy with Hello. the interception. We've seen a lot of razzle-dazzle in a game where the field is not really conducive to such plays. <laughs> very, very surprising, John. Uh, I find it hard to believe that they'd go up, up top with two, peep, two clippers covering a Red Raider down there, and it and Guy Miller picks off the pass. Fal Falmouth gets a ball deep in their own territory, but they save a score. Of course, that happens on razzle-dazzle plays. I think the, the passer sometimes feels obligated to throw the ball to you know, continue to play and make something happen, but sometimes you just got to eat it. So Falmouth has a ball deep in their own territory. Now, they don't want to turn the ball over. First and 10 at their own three. Kelly under center. They give up the middle. There's nothing there. Number 75, Mike Donovan leads the charge. A gain of maybe one. We'll call it second down and nine. Thus far, John, Barstable has been terrific in team tackling. Josh uh, getting Perry. seven or eight players, no red shirts play. around the white shirted guy with the ball. They've done a terrific Second job down. of, of all coming together and making the tackle together, which is very important. As we mentioned in the pregame, this defense has been overlooked because of the great running game of Barnstable. But they need to play a great game today. This should be a low-scoring affair. 
And we'll see what turns out as the Barstool defense gets set. Once again, you see them bunch together, all 11 guys within a five, five seven yard radius. Once again, movement on the defense. Once again, the, on the officials let the play go. Why aren't they calling these plays dead when the offensive linemen are moving and all the players just stop? I think right there, John, the defensive line moved. And, and the quarterback decided to snap the ball. He wanted to get the five-yard offside play. We'll see what the referee calls. Okay. It is offsides against Barnstable, so Falmouth gets five free yards this time. That gets them out of the hole as far as being inside the five, and they'll take that break with 6.45 to go here in the second quarter. Offside, defense. Repeat down. So the officials mark the ball out toward the nine-yard line. Mind you that 50-50 raffle tickets uh, being Looks like a today. second down and a Very long first, four, yeah. a short yeah, five the for the Falmouth Clippers. They're on sale. On Joe Kelly, the quarterback, the has Dave Valesig, the fullback, Kevin Medeiros also in the backfield. Kelly looks out at the Barnstable defense. Just about every player is right in his face. The give to the tailback out across the 10-yard line towards the 13 when he stopped there. Medeiros Kevin Medeiros, the ball carrier. Dugan tackle Sherwood on the Sherwood. tackle. First down. Being first so the Red ten, Raiders pick up the first down. Line. They wanted that valley. They did not want to punt deep in their own territory. They pick up the first down, first and 10. The ball is out at the 13-yard line. Super, super job by right guard uh, Larry Ferenter and Justin Domingos, the right tackle from the Clippers offensive line. Just getting the ball out, getting down, opening holes, an off-tackle play gets six or seven yards for the Clippers. Kelly under center. Play action fake, rolling to his left. He has some daily, makes a great move, gets to the outside, out across the 20-yard line, just over the 20-yard line. Joe Kelly was Eventually, the ball Kevin Houston on the tackle, a great right move. That's where we saw Houston. the athletic ability of Joe Kelly there. The great quarterback rolling to his left, getting good yardage. We'll give him sec seven yards. It'll be second down and three. Gain of seven. John Butchergrass along with Mark Koops. Glad you can join us here on Channel 11 for the 104th meeting between the Barnstable Red Raiders and the Falmouth Clippers. Barnstable leads six to nothing with 5.25 to go in the second quarter. Once again, Joe Kelly under center. They give to the tailback Maderos. He spins across the 25 out near the 26-yard line. And another first down for the Falmouth Clippers. Madero, so the Clippers Gary. start to move the ball well. I like the running game first of the down. Clippers thus far on this drive. Uh, the, the, the half that everybody has been concentrated on O'Neal, mm -hmm. and yet Falmouth is making a statement in this drive. They sure are, Mark. They are de started deep in their own territory. They've been able to get a couple first downs. Now they have first and 10 at their own 25. However, only five minutes to go. The clock in this second quarter in the first half of course turning non-stop because of all the running plays because it's so hard to throw the ball kelly under center the wishbone attack for the falmouth clippers back to pass goes kelly he rolls to his right he's going to look to run he has some data but then he's hit hard there by a host of kelly, tacklers. Kelly. five of them by barnes the bull driscoll houston sherwood all there right down by rose he's out across at the 32 yard line and more good yardage there by Kelly. But again, Mark, time the factor, four and a half to go. They got a long way to go to score. This has been a, a good drive thus far. You notice on that play, Greeley, the captain of the, uh, the Clippers, came out and pulled out and blocked for the quarterback. A good gain for the Clippers. 4.20 to go now. They're 68 yards away from the end zone. They need to pick up a big chunk of yardage if they're going to find that end zone. Once again, wishbone formation. Everything's stacked up very close on offense and defense. To give to the tailback, out across over the... 35-yard line. That'll set up a second down and we'll call it three. Number 35, Josh Mant on the carry. 345 to go. Third down. Ball is at the 34-yard uh, line. We third down and one. Like about two yards. Third down and two. Officials get set, and we're ready to go. Three and a half to go. Another third down situation for the Clippers. Let's see if they can convert. Kelly, the quarterback. The give to the tailback. Once again, Matt up the middle. He has running room and enough running room for the first down. Josh Mant carried for a first down up to the 40-yard line. So Josh Mant up the middle. And, of course, Falman is going to start, th start thinking about using their timeouts. Three and a half to go. The clock's still winding. I like the running thus far of, of uh, Mant and Medeiros. Um, uh, both these athletes have uh, been able to come in this ball game and, and know the, 
Woods. First and ten for Falmouth. Lewis, the quarterback Kelly, back to pass, looking to his right. He's trying to throw the ball. He throws it up for Graz, and it is knocked away there. A beautiful play Kelly's pass by number 15, Chad Traveri. Knocked down by Traveri. So, for the first time on this drive, Falmouth attempted to get the big chunk of yardage. Damian Palanza, the receiver on the play, but the nice play by Traveri. The clock stops with 3.06 to go, second down and 10. The ball just short of the 40-yard line. The Clippers still in their own territory. John, I was saying that Mant and Medeiros have done a nice job in this, in this ground game for this drive with three minutes left to go before the first half. I think go back to them, see if they can open, see if the offensive line can open some holes and then mix in a pass here and there. Second and 10. Back to pass. Kelly looking long, cannot find a receiver. He will run the ball. He has plenty of room to his right. He's across midfield to the 45, the 40, and taken out of bounds there by Dugan Sherwood. Kelly out of bounds after he carried first and ten for Falmouth. They're in Barnstable territory. Went out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Kelly rolled left, was looking long. Spun back to his right, Mark, and there was no containment for Barnes. Well, no one there, and he took the open field. Keller reminds me a lot of Steve Young, who's able to, to make things happen with his running game. And, and I think if that's an added incentive for the Clippers' game plan this afternoon, they have a lot of things going for them if he's able to run the ball. First and 10, 2.54 to go until halftime. Joe Kelly, the quarterback, the give to the tailback, Maderos. He breaks a tackle, gets down to the 36-yard line. Mike Donovan was there in the backfield. Couldn't quite wrap him up. Maderos spinned away and picked up about three yards on the play. It'll be second down and seven. The opening quarter was filled with some heavy, heavy rain. It has now kind of subsided to a light mist. It is cold up here and windy. The wind is also picked up here at Leo Shields Field. Falmouth began this drive inside their five. They've slowly, meticulously moved the ball down the field, and finally they're in Barnstable territory, second and eight. Back to pass, play action fake for Kelly. He's going to look to run again up the middle, and this time Barnstable does a good job, and he has no yardage on the play. Kelly, tackle by Sherwood. So Joe Kelly, as Coach Winslow said, he's the focus of their offense. As you see, everything revolves around him. Kelly's doing a terrific job, yeah. and I think... Uh, I think the referees a lot letting a lot of things go, John. Uh, there was a little holding there on that play, and, and uh, we saw it from up here. Uh, but they're letting things go. They're letting the guys play, and that's good. They probably understand how hard it is down there just to, just to move around with the footwork with the wet field. Third down and eight. So a third down situation for the Clippers. A minute and a half to go here in the first half. Barnes will lead six to nothing. Kelly has spread out his offense. He has no running back, so you know a pass is coming. Kelly back to pass. Rolls out to his left. Blitzing for Barnes to bowl on the play. An incomplete Kelly pass. pass. Incomplete. So the, the pressure by the Barnstable defense there, Mark, 38 Andy Milk blitzed from his linebacker position and made Kelly throw the ball before he wanted to. With a minute and a half left in the ha uh, until the halftime, John, if, if the Clippers can score here, go into the locker room with that momentum, boy, what a big turnaround that would be compared to the first quarter when Barnstable just dominated the whole, the whole first quarter drive. That's, just, that's right. So with this big fourth and eight, situation for Falmouth. They call a timeout, and we'll take a break here with 1.25 to go in until the first half comes to an end at 6-0 Barnstable. Hey, sports fan, Logo Sportswear at the Cape Cod Mall has a terrific selection of authentic college and professional licensed merchandise. Logo has over 350 different styles of hats. Looking for Red Sox jackets, Bruins jerseys, or shark sweats? Go Logo! Whether it's the Final Four, Super Bowl, or the Olympics, Logo Sportswear has collectibles for you. From children to adults, Logo Sportswear can outfit just one or a whole team. So when you want your favorite sports team or player, go Logo and stop in today. In the changing world, there still exists a time-honored tradition. Hood Home Delivery, a convenience for busy mothers and families. Hood 10-quart or 6-liter handy tap dispensers make storage and service a snack, and they're available in both milk or water. The modern Stay Fresh container that stores up to 10 quarts in the space of just three half-gallon packages. With Hood Handy Tap and all the extras, there's simply no need to run out. Yes, we still make house calls. Call for Hood Home Service, 771-4700. We are back, 125 to go 
here in the second quarter. A big play for the Falcons. The Clippers. It's fourth down and eight. They trail six to nothing. And as Mark Hoops mentioned, if they can get into this end zone somehow and come out of this first half where they started from, boy, they would love that as they head into the second half where anything could happen. But they have to make it happen here. Fourth and eight. Kelly has five men as receivers. Chris D'Amato's goes in motion. They lateral to D'Amato's. He tries to throw the ball. The ball is loose on the ground, out of bounds. And they are going to rule the ball. Let's see what they rule the ball. No ruling yet. They may going to rule D'Amato's down. It doesn't really matter, though, because that was fourth down. And Barnstable will take over with 118 to go. Decent field position, Mark. Do you think they'll make an attempt to move down the field here and get position to score? If anything, they move down the field uh, in a minute and uh, 18 seconds to possibly get in field goal position, take a 9 nothing lead going into halftime. The Red Raiders have the ground game working this afternoon. The Clippers had the ground game working, but what a defensive stop by the Red Raider defense. The blitz by Andy Milk, the biggest play on that defensive stand on third down for the Red Raiders. Let's see what they do here with 118 to go. McAllister goes in motion. The give to O'Neal straight up the middle. He has no room after gain of about one. He stopped right at the 45-yard line. It appears Barnstable may be content going into halftime, up 6 nothing. They don't want to fumble the ball. Going hard, going to be hard to get into field goal range because it's hard to kick the ball. You have to get pretty close. John, I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that game plan at all because the missed extra point may be a key later in the game. It's a good point. 48 seconds ago, though, not much time. Fine under center. Play action, fake O'Neal, back to pass. He's looking long down the left side. McAllister gets in position, makes the play, makes the catch, the flag is down. That may be offensive pass interference on that play, Mark. It looked like McAllister may have pushed off. The official is going back. All right, let's see what the call is. And it is offensive pass interference, tough call. Fine back to pass, under through McAllister, really the right pass in that situation. McAllister had his eyes on the ball. He stopped. It looked like it was more of just a, a bracing position to get himself in position, but a slight push off, and the officials thought that made the difference, and they called off. Offensive pass interference. Watch it down. So, Mark, they did, after the running play, maybe they wanted to suck Thelma in. They went for the big play on the second down, and it would have worked except for the pass interference. Exactly, and, and it was a pass interference call on McAllister that has stopped this drive. Instead of being down in the 30 yard line at the 30 yard line, they're back at their own 40. Ball's on the 40 yard line, third and 14. We'll see if they run the clock out here. Find the quarterback. In motion goes McAllister. The give to O'Neal. Up the middle. He has no room there. Once again, the Falmouth defense gang tacking on O'Neal. There's no room for him. Gregoriatis. Socrates with the tackle. He's played well so far. It's fourth down for the Red Raiders. 22 seconds to go. John, Falmouth's defense at this point in the ball game up to this in the first half has not played like a three and six ball oh. club plays. Well, they've had some, uh, they played well really all year. The games they've lost have been low scoring. Uh, as we take a look at the common opponents, of course, both these teams are in the old Colony League. And how have they done against different teams? Well, against Weymouth, Barnes to a one 14 to nine. Falmouth lost 15 to 12. North Quincy, one of Barnstable's two losses. They, they got beat 25 to 6. Falmouth lost 13 to 7. Against Silver Lake, the Red Raiders won 30 to 12. Falmouth lost 28 to 26. Bridgewater Rainham, both teams defeated Bridgewater Rainham. Again, Falmouth the low score, and you see the good defense throughout the season. Against Taunton, both teams won again. Falmouth won 13 to 12. Barnstable 30 to 14. Against Plymouth, both teams lost big. 28 to nothing, 34 to 12. Falmouth lost 34 to 12. And against Quincy, Barnesville won 7 nothing, but Falmouth lost 28 to 14. 16 seconds to go. It's fourth and 14. Barnesville in a punting formation. And of course, Falmouth will go for the block here. Mike Swift back to punt. Kevin Medeiros all by himself to receive the punt. The snap is good. One step and the punt just getting it away is Swift. It's a good effort there. The ball bouncing down towards the 30. Down to 25 and down at the 24-yard line. So a good effort by Swift. Punt it down to the 24-yard line, a 36-yard punt. Six seconds ago now here in the second quarter. Johnny, you had to remember, among their common opponents, Falmouth has lost four of the eight games by a total of seven points. A good ball club stays there until the end and loses just in the 
you know, at the end of the ball. Right. Right. And, their, and their big problem is scoring inside the 20. Once they get there, as we see tonight, they've had a good drive, and then it's stalled. And that's been their problem. They can't put the big points on the board. Their defense, as we see today, is a good one. Six seconds ago. We'll see what Falma does. We may see Kelly roll out here and try to make something happen. He has four receivers and one running back. That's Medeiros. Watch out for the quick hitter to Medeiros. Kelly, the quarterback. He does give it to Medeiros. Straight up the middle. He has plenty of running room, but Barnstable just wants to get him down. Medeiros across midfield to the 45, down towards the 40, and Sherwood saves the day with the last tackle. The half will come to an end. So a long gainer by Medeiros comes to not. And after the first half of play, Barnstable leads six to nothing. The field conditions have made a difference, as we have seen. And uh, so far, after first half, it is six to nothing, Barnstable. So with that score, six to nothing. Let's go down to Suzanne Mikowski to see what Spanky Demands thinks about the game so far. Coach, are you doing what you want to do offensively? Well, I mean, weather conditions obviously are making a little bit of a factor. Falm was playing tough up front, and they're doing a, a nice job against us. You know, we, we got a big break early and, you know, capitalized on that. Now we're hoping to come out in the second half on our first drive and be able to do something. Do you think you're going to go to the air, stay with the air? You've had good luck. Yeah, we've had some success with that. I mean, you know, what we said all week long is we've got to have a balance, you know, of both run and pass, and that's what we're trying to keep established even under these conditions. Okay? Thanks, Coach. Thanks. All the gifts you can give her, none is as precious as the plain cedar chest, because it's the one that holds everything else that's precious. It's a gift that will last a lifetime, and every time she opens it, she'll think of you. Beautiful plain cedar chest, priced from $199.95, with over 50 styles from which to choose, available at Bun Repose in three great locations. Holiday shopping is so convenient at the Bell Tower Mall. Choose some select beef at Bell Tower Beef, fresh lobster at the Lobster Trap, and specialty foods from Cape Cod Natural Foods to gifts for the home and loved ones available at Country Star, Annabelle's, and the Fabric Studio. For those special holiday parties, head to Pro Cuts and Tiffany's for a festive new look. On Sundays, enjoy brunch at Kerrigan's with Santa and his helpers. This holiday, put the Bell Tower Mall first on your shopping list. Route 28, Centerville. Welcome back to halftime of the Barstable Found with football game. You know, they've been playing this great game since 1895, and since then, many men have been involved. And for a look back at some of those few men who have been involved in this great game, we offer this retrospective of the Barnstable Falmouth football rivalry. Count it down with three, two, one. And the Barstable Red Raiders win the Thanksgiving Day rivalry. They had to the game. It is grass stains and dirt. It is bone cold bleachers. And it is high school heart. It is teammates and it is friends. It is Barnstable and Falmouth. Falmouth and Barnstable first played each other on November 2nd, 1895, when touchdowns were worth four points and field goals five. Barnstable was then known as Hyannis High and Falmouth Lawrence High. Barnstable had 14 seniors and Falmouth 74 students. But above all the numbers stands the men, strong and free. They're the anchor in this great game each yearly collection keeping their predecessors young and purposeful. Much more than a football game, Thanksgiving Day is a yearly reminder of a time past. A good time. A happy time. And this is their story. Oh, it was something that built up through the year. and It was always get Falma. In Falmouth, they were the <laughs> ones that we looked for all the time. And in those years, we played Falmouth twice a year. We played them on Columbus Day, and we played them Thanksgiving Day. One was at home, and one was away. So even back then, it, it was still a big deal? Oh, to, well, yes. You played, there was no substitution. You played offense and defense. And once you were taken out of the game, you couldn't go back in. 
So uh, the substitutes generally get a chance to play the, the uh, latter part of each half. And as long as you played in the Falmouth game, you're entitled to a lot of it. I get two Bs, so I got a B, and then in 31 with the depression on, they only gave you a certificate because there wasn't that much money around to buy another B. <laughs> So I played two Thanksgiving Day games against Boston and won them both. <laughs> During my senior year, I was a high school, I was a captain, and Boston was undefeated. And Boston used to be in Class C, Fowler was in Class D. And they were favored to beat us by, I think it was three touchdowns. And we ended up beating them 14 to 13. You never forgot that? That I never did. And, I, and, and it just so happened that I scored the uh, winning touchdown on about a 56-yard run. So that put some icing on the cake. It made it feel good. When I watched the high school games, I just wish that I was back in high school again, and I was out in the field playing against it for that particular team. And I love playing against Barnstable. talking about his games, my talking about my games, and my three sons talking about theirs. So uh, suffice it to say, there's uh, a good dose of uh, Bostable Falmouth uh, flavor uh, in terms of our Turkey Day dinner. And I guess perhaps the most vi vivid memory that I had was the overwhelming downer in terms of losing as a, a junior, 21 to nothing, uh, which was like the end of the world uh, to us at that time. And then, conversely, coming back the next year and winning 40 to nothing. There were very few blowouts uh, in this particular game because of the rivalry. And I thought that those two years were unusual because of the large number of points that were scored in two different directions. So I guess, obviously, the one that was savored the most was the 40 to nothing win. But uh, the previous year was really a significant downturn for me. Uh, the 1951 season that I alluded to before was an undefeated season and was the last uh, season that Bonstable did have an un undefeated team and I had the great uh, pleasure of being quarterback of that team and we had a very uh, fine uh, club that year and uh, to this day we still stick together and meet before the game and have a good uh, time with one another uh, reminiscing. first recollection would be I was the water boy when my brother was a senior playing uh, four years prior the year that Falmouth won the Class D state championship and I'd run out of the field with my bucket of water dreaming of the day when I in fact would be able to come down the hill at go full of field and play the game you're part of Cape Cod you're part of something that's uh, significant and it's really worth holding together because the as I say the game is important when you play it what is really important are the young men young women and their parents and friends who participate in this annual event. It is truly a Thanksgiving Day. And I think that's, if you ask me what is most meaningful, I would say that the Thanksgiving Day game represents Thanksgiving. You're thankful for the coming together of your friends, your family, uh, and look forward to another 100 years. Was it difficult growing up in Falmouth and going to Barnstable uh, in light of the big game every Thanksgiving? It had a lot of drawbacks, uh, but uh, Thanksgiving was tough, to, you know, uh, especially when, uh, well, the year before, our undefeated year, we had lost to Falmouth 21 to nothing, and then it came back and we just about doubled it to the following year, 40 to nothing. So there was a lot of, uh, you know, it was good, clean fun, but a lot of needling going on. and now. Uh, as my children grew up, uh, they were going to Falmouth, and my brother, who was a quarterback for Falmouth in 1948, uh, I think it was, or 49, uh, and all his children went to Barnstable. So the Thanksgiving was quite a uh, quite a rivalry around the big turkey, uh, uh, who's with the better team and who was going to win. But uh, it was a lot of fun. We didn't have 
a platform, so we uh, convinced John Hinckley and Son Company to loan us a flatbed truck, which we pulled up to the back portion of the stands, and it was level with the highest level of stands. We thought, okay, well, that's great. We're all set. So we set up for the game, never taking into account, such as today, where it stands are empty, that there would be people here. <laughs> Well, there were lots of people here, were probably 25, 3,000 people in the stands. So when we get to the game and finally get ready to broadcast, all these people are standing up, which is normal, and they stood up for the whole game. So I couldn't see. <laughs> now I'm supposed to be broadcasting the game. So I stood on a chair to see over the tallest person, and meanwhile the engineer, whose name was Wes Stidstone, just died recently, a great guy, he never saw the game. He saw the backs of people's legs. Uh, what do you prefer, playing or coaching? Right now, coaching is better than playing. I'm getting a little old for the, but uh, overall, you know, I mean, I enjoyed my playing days. I enjoyed the camaraderie I had with my teammates, and I'm fortunate to have one of our captains is Mike Reedy, who is an assistant coach with me here in Falmouth, uh, it's great. You know, those memories are the ones that you, you remember the most. Is that what they say, that the records don't really matter when you go into this game, or is that just a cliche? No, I, 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 I believe that. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, you, you, you know, I couldn't tell you the records my junior year and my senior, but I can remember the Falmouth games. Uh, and I remember faces and names of the players and so on and so forth, but the Falmouth game is important. They have met over 100 times now. The men you've seen here, as well as men like Barnstable's Leo Shields and Falmouth's Gov Fuller, kept the game vibrant. But most of all, it is the youth which will drive this tradition forward. Here's to another 100 years. It didn't matter where you were in the band, a pep squad, a cheerleader, or a water boy as I was with my brother's team. It's something special to come down the hill at Gov Fuller Field. The crowd parts and onto the field the kids go and uh, it's something you remember, you never forget it. Live or just play on the cake. Signs are everywhere leading the way to recreation and relaxation. But sometimes, it can all be broken with startling impact. The law offices of attorney Don Weber and Hyannis concentrate on personal injury litigation. A call to attorney Don Weber doesn't cost you anything. Not calling could. Because when you're entitled to rightful compensation, it pays to avoid the wrong signs. Attorney Don Weber, 687 West Main Street, Hyannis, across from Barnstable High. Hey, sports fan, Logo Sportswear at the Cape Cod Mall has a terrific selection of authentic college and professional licensed merchandise. Logo has over 350 different styles of hats. Looking for Red Sox jackets, Bruins jerseys, or shark sweats? Go Logo! Whether it's the Final Four, Super Bowl, or the Olympics, Logo Sportswear has collectibles for you. From children to adults, Logo Sportswear can outfit just one or a whole team. So when you want your favorite sports team or player, go Logo and stop in today. Well, we are back for the second half kickoff. Barnstable will receive in the second half. Mark, you chatted with the Barnstable coaches. What did they tell you? 
Well, I think one of the key objectives this half is to open up a little bit of more of the passing game into the flats, get the tight end open. Uh, he hasn't been used the whole game, and I think that's one of the effective keys that may work for the Red Raiders offense this half. Okay, so we'll see what happens. Of course, six to nothing, Barnes the Bull leads. Back deep, Jason O'Neill, Scott Rose. The kick is sent downfield, wow. heading right towards Rose. He takes on the 21-yard line, out across the 25, across the 30. He slips, gains his feet, hit hard at the 35-yard line, where he goes Rose down, a flag off. down on Back the play. Penalty on the play. After the fact, let's see what that call is. Perhaps another late hit on Falmouth. Balls at the 35-yard line. So we have a 15-yard penalty. Unsportsmanlike on the defense. You heard the call right there. So once again, a bad penalty for Falmouth. Just bad decision. Not focused on the part of the Clippers to begin the second half. Instead, the Red Raiders, Red Raiders starting on their 35. They're starting in, the, in midfield with terrific field position to start the second half. OK. The Barnesville coaches mentioned to Mark that they may throw the ball. They begin with that lateral to Rose. Option right. Pitcher O'Neill. He's across midfield. Out across the 45 down to the 40 and at the 39-yard line of Falman. O'Neill carried for a first down. Give O'Neill 11 yards on the carry. First down, well, Red Raiders. 39. It's the third time we've seen that play today. Mark Fine goes in motion. They pitched to Rose, the quarterback, and he ran the option this time. And all four success, uh, successful gains for the Red Raiders offense. And, Mark, you got to say that this opening drive for Barnesville, if they can go down and score, perhaps it could change the game, maybe give them breathing room that they wanted in the first half. Definitely so, John. I think that's a great point. We'll see what happens. So far, so good with field position, with the first play from scrimmage. Let's see if they, they can knock the ball in, John. Find the quarterback, Kennedy to the fullback. He gives to Kennedy. Kennedy spins the line of scrimmage, but he cannot get anywhere. Kennedy, ball the Falmouth defense plugs up the middle. And there's no gain on the play. Of course, as we see out there, the footing is not good. Suzanne Mikowski on the sideline has a report. Suzanne? Thanks, John. As you can see, the conditions on the field are terrible. The rain is coming down even harder. According to Corey Scrubs, he said it's terrible. He says that you're slipping, you're sliding, it's hard to get control of yourself to block. And talking to Jason O'Neill, he says it's as good as you're going to get. Back to you, John. Okay, Suzanne, thank you very much. Second half action, Barnesville with the ball. 8.50 to go in the third quarter. They lead 6 to nothing. They put the ball into Falmouth territory. Second and 10 at the 39. Fine under center. Gives the ball to O'Neill. O'Neill over the left side. He's hit hard behind the backfield and for a loss. For a loss by Larry Ferreter. Larry Ferreter, the linebacker, number 57, a great play on O'Neill. O'Neill's really only had two good runs, Mark. Other than that, Falmouth has done well. Stopped him very, very stopped O'Neill very, very strongly. And the offensive game plan for the Red Raiders has to be to mix it up this half because they know that the Clippers are in this ball game, something that was not anticipated at this point. And so with Falmouth being in the game, it's only 6-0. The Red Raiders have to mix up the offense. Does put the pressure on the offense not to make the turnover, just as Mark mentioned that the wind picked up here at Leo Shields. Their fake reverse, fine out in the flat, looks for a man. It is tipped by the, the Falmouth lineman and almost caught by C.T. Olander. Incomplete pass. It'll be fourth right, down for the Red Raiders. Fourth down. So the Falmouth defense, Mark, comes right out and stops the Red Raiders, a nice defensive stand right there. You know, this is what football is all about, John. You got rain today in, Bar in, in Barnesville, Massachusetts. Look at the guys out there running around. They got mud on their pants and on their uniforms. Nobody cares how pretty they look. The, the, the big cameras aren't here today. We're doing this ball game. We're having a good time. And the players are having a good time. And they're in it to win it. And, and uh, the Clippers did a nice job of stopping that drive. Football at its best. Swift, the punter, has done well today and does well again within the wet conditions. The ball was taken there at the 15-yard line, out towards the 20. Miller. Return Miller the on punt. the return. Back to and the Falmouth will take line. over. By Scott Rose, the first so Guy Miller the on the punt return. Point. And Falmouth will take over. 7.44 to go in the third quarter. Just a 6-0 lead for the Red Raiders. Their story this year for Falmouth, they've moved the ball well, like we've seen here, but they cannot finish off and get the score. And as a result, they have a 3-6 and six record this year. John, this could be the drive of the game for the Clippers. If they don't produce any results from this drive, this is going to be a key factor for the outcome of the ball game. 
Kelly gives to his tailback, Medeiros. He gets a couple, but he's hit very, very Zero. hard by Kevin Houston, Drop number fire. 83. Houston and Matt Funnel. The Barnstable defense has played well. And of one, be second and nine. The defensive line, Peter Sullivan, a defensive end. The defensive well, tackle, Matt Bunnell. The nose guard, Mike Dovin. Justin Kazalt at tackle. And John Hill, the defensive end. The linebackers, Dugan Sherwood, Kevin Houston, and Andy Milk. The secondary, Chad Treveri, Chris Driscoll, and Scott Rose. Second down and nine. Joe Kelly, the Falmouth quarterback. Once again, we have a false start of some sort. Maybe Barnstable made contact, or maybe Falmouth moved. That will be the decision of the refs. Let's see what the call is. I think Barnstable was drawn offside again, uh, the quarterback. Nope, again. it's offside Barnstable, Mark. Well, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> please pardon me. But I know, that, I know the Clipper quarterback did snap the ball offside. to draw them offside. Repeat down. So Kelly gets a big five-yard penalty. Those penalties become bigger and bigger as the game goes on and the game stays tight. To get those free yards in this situation, and especially Thalma's situation, they definitely need it, and uh, Barnes wants to stay away from that. Second down and four. Instead of second and nine, it's second and four, John. Wishbone formation for Kelly. He rolls towards right. No, he gives to tailback Maderos. He's hit hard at the line of scrimmage and down for no gain. Dugan Shoreward once again with the tackle number 46, the linebacker. Barstool's linebackers have played very well. Milk Houston, and Sherwood, and, and Andy Milk made the big play Medeiros. in the first half as well. Third down. Third down for the Clippers. And Third and three. The ball, the ball on their 29-yard line. Barnstable trying to make it four years in a row, winning on Thanksgiving. The give to the tailback once again. He has breaks free across the... 30-yard line, out across the 35, and a first down. Sullivan. Josh Mant once again with the ball carrier, with the, with the, the carry. And it's the first down for Falmouth. So there's Mant. He has run well, Zay. You've liked him. Yes, I have. He's a hard runner. He's a gutsy runner. He wanted that first down to keep the drive going. First he got it, and the Clippers are still alive. 37. Third quarter action, windy and rainy at Leo Shields Field. It's been raining since the opening kickoff. The, the heaviest rain came in the first quarter. The wind has really picked up. First attempt to 37. Gives to the tailback. Once the end, it's Mant. He's across the 45. Still on his feet. Near midfield. Five just short of midfield. Area. He has a first down. Scott Rose on the tackle. And Brought so Falmouth, as Mark mentioned, possibly the biggest drive of the, the game. Down 6 the nothing. At midfield. And they can definitely make a game of it if they get into the end zone. But, Mark, we've seen this all year long. Falmouth driving and then stopping once they get to this point. So now they must get over that hurdle. Exactly. And, and one of the problems Barstool's having now is missed tackles, John. Uh, yes. Seven missed tackles on that play alone allowed Matt to run for seven more yards. First and 10, 49-yard line. They'll try to get in Barnstable territory. They do, and it's Valesic up the middle, driving for a first down. Ten more yards. And Mark Blessing. mentioned at the end of the first half, it's carried right, over to the second half. Barnes will not tackling right particularly well. Is it hard to tackle in bad weather? Eight, oh, you better <laughs> John. The slippery jerseys, the slippery pants, no more arm tackles. You've got to meet the guy up front, meet him head on, and make the, and grab his legs and take him down. And so far, that's not happening on this Clipper drive by the Red Raider defense. This is the biggest point of the ball game right now for Falmouth. First and 10, they're in Barnstable territory at the 40-yard line. Kelly, the quarterback. Once again, he appears to have drawn Barnstable offside, but the handoff goes to Mann anyway. Mind He's the across the 40 near the 36. And offside by Kelly doing a good job of that. A free play for the Clipper uh, offense. And it seems that uh, Barnstable has been susceptible to penalties in this opening quarter uh, of the half. Exactly right. 5.05 to go. We played half of the third quarter. The score remains the same as it was at halftime. 6-0. The only touchdown of the game came on a Joe Kennedy Outside. run up the middle. Defense. Repeat down. We have a timeout on the field with the score. Barnstable 6, Falmouth well, nothing. You're watching the Barnstable Falmouth football game on five. Channel 11. In the changing world, there still exists a time-honored tradition. Hood home delivery. A convenience for busy mothers and families. Hood 10-quart or 6-liter handy tap dispensers make storage and service a snap. And they're available in both milk or water. The modern Stay Fresh container that stores up to 10 quarts in the space of just three half-gallon packages. With Hood Handy Tap and all the extras, there's simply no need to run out. Yes, we still make house calls. 
Call for Hood Home Service at 771-4700. Holiday shopping is so convenient at the Bell Tower Mall. Choose some select beef at Bell Tower Beef, fresh lobster at the Lobster Trap, and specialty foods from Cape Cod Natural Foods to gifts for the home and loved ones available at Country Star, Annabelle's, and the Fabric Studio. For those special holiday parties, head to Pro Cuts and Tiffany's for a festive new look. On Sundays, enjoy brunch at Kerrigan's with Santa and his helpers. This holiday, put the Bell Tower Mall first on your shopping list. Route 28, Centerville. First and five, ball to the 35-yard line. Kelly gives to the tailback once again. Matt, he's up the middle. He breaks a couple tackles and down to the 30-yard line. On, again, carry. Tackle by Sherwood and Sullivan. So another first, first down, down for Falmouth. Well, and team? with under Why five not? minutes to go in the third quarter, they're making a move here against Barnstable. Every running play for the Clipper offense thus far has gained four or five yards. A big key to this drive yeah. to keep the drive going, to keep the Clipper offense on the field. And now what Falmouth wants to do, stay away from the penalty, which has hurt them so far in this game. Once they've put together a drive, they've stalled because of penalties. Kelly. Once again, tries to draw Barnes to offsides. He doesn't. Valesic right up the middle. A good tackle there by Bunnell after a gain of about three Good yards. Good made the tackle on number 44, Dave Valesic. So three yards for Valesic. It's second and seven. The clock second continues to wind down. 4.20 to go in the third quarter. The Barnes defense needs to dig in here and make a stand. We've talked about O'Neill. We've talked about the offensive line, the running game. But right now, as it stands, the most important part of the Barnstable effort is the defense. Second and seven. We haven't seen Thomas spread it out yet on this drive. It's straight ahead running. They've done very well. Kelly, here's the play action fake. Rolling to the right. He has running room. He's going towards the 25, but tackled there by Sherwood. Breaks the tackle across the 20. Almost broke free to the end zone Kelly, before being tripped up. He has a first down. You have to feel that the Clippers now, it's crunch time for them. They're inside the 20. They're in what you call the red zone. They've got to produce points on this drive. They haven't all year. First and 10. The ball is on the seven and yard line. We'll make it first and goal. Two and a half to go. Kelly, the quarterback, the give to the tailback. A fumble again, and once again, they get the ball. Kelly was a ball carrier. We apologize for any right technical difficulties Rose which we have. It is rainy, it is wet, that wreaks havoc on equipment. So we'll do the best job we can bringing you this contest the rest of the way the rain Carry continues to, to fall. Back to the game, Mark. Kelly again. Kelly is dominating this drive for the Clippers. The, the Barnstable defense ha has had no suspect um, defense against Kelly at all. Kelly has run the ball against them with very, very good success. Third and two. Two yards from pay dirt for the foul with Clippers. Kelly, the quarterback, under center. The give to Mant. He's in the end zone for a touchdown. Number 35, Josh Mont scored for Falmouth. Uh, they have tied the game Good at six out. with Falmouth. 103 to go Scores in the third six quarter. Six. For the first time, we see a lot of emotion on the sideline of the Falmouth Clippers. Of the game, the High School chapter of so with 103 to go here we'll in the third quarter, out, uh, we'll come back with the extra point for Falmouth. TCI Cape Cod Communications would like to thank the following companies for their sponsorship of this telecast and join them in wishing the Barnstable Red Raiders and the Falmouth Clippers the best of luck in this classic matchup end in 1993. Warren Buick, located at 100 Barnstable Road, Hyannis. Cape Dairy Products Incorporated at 771-4700. Logo Sportswear in the Cape Cod Mall by Woolworths. And Dennis John Formals in Hyannis at 775-3466. Hey, sports fan, Logo Sportswear at the Cape Cod Mall has a terrific selection of authentic college and professional licensed merchandise. Logo has over 350 different styles of hats. Looking for Red Sox jackets, Bruins jerseys, or shark sweats? Go Logo. Whether it's the Final Four, Super Bowl, or the Olympics, Logo Sportswear has collectibles for you. From children to adults, Logo Sportswear can outfit just one or a whole team. So when you want your favorite sports team or player, go Logo and stop in today. 
Falmouth is going for two here. It's six to six. Kelly, the quarterback, has three receivers to his right. He rolls right, looking in the end zone. He has a receiver, but it's incomplete. Extra point attempt is no good. Score remains tied, 6-6. Six, six. Number 22, Mike Andrews, was in the end zone. Falmouth going for two. Interesting move there. Johnny, I don't like the call at all. Uh, Kelly had a lot of room to run to the right side, a lot of open field. He had three blockers ahead of him. He elects to throw with a wet ball into a wet area where his receiver fell down, couldn't make the catch. Instead uh, uh, of going up 8-6, we're tied at 6-6, new ball game. Just a brand new ball game. Now, once again, the onus is placed back on the Barnstable offense. They must score to change the, the game as it stands right now with a 6-6 tie. 103 to go in third quarter. Of course, with a back like O'Neill, anything can happen at any time with that long run, that capability. John, I think an important point to, to think about now is O'Neill's had two long runs thus far. Other, from, other than that, the Falmouth Clipper defense has stopped him on the run. They certainly have, Mark. As you mentioned, a back like O'Neill. You just can't keep your mind off him because when you do, he's going to break it. Let's see if he has one more long run stored up for Barnstable this year. Back deep, Rose and O'Neill. See if O'Neill gets a chance. They've been kicking away all game. They kick away again. It's a short kick. It's taken by Kennedy. Kennedy's across the 40. In fact, right the on the 40 yard line. Joe Kennedy. Six to six the to score. And ten for Barnstable on their own 40 yard Falmouth line. Falmouth Clipper sideline was ecstatic after that touchdown. Their emotional level really has gone up. The defense has not needed that. They played well the whole game. Let's see how they respond. First and 10 for the Red Raiders. Kennedy and O'Neill in the backfield. Still on a 5-3. Give to O'Neill. He's hit hard once again at the line of scrimmage. Tackle by Femino. Number 88. Steve okay. Femino on the tackle. You have to remember that Falmouth's linebackers, now the outside linebackers, are way off the outside of the 5-3 front uh, for the defense. So they have made some defensive changes, enabling, enabling them to cut down on the strong side of the field, which O'Neill is running to so far this half. So Barnesville's going to have to throw the ball, you feel? I, I think they're going to have to, definitely. Second and 10. 20 seconds to go in this third quarter. This could be the last play. Find the quarterback. In motion goes McAllister. Play action fake, there it is. Fine back to pass. Oh, he overthrows his receiver. Almost intercepted by Velesig. Dugan Sherwood came over the middle. He overthrew him, and it was almost intercepted. It'll be third down and 10. The clock stops with 13 seconds to go. We wish we could say the same about the rain. It has not. It's raining as hard as it did in the first quarter now. Six to six. It's going to be tough to score. Falmouth has to love their position right now. Mark mentioned that could have been the biggest drive, the last drive. It turned out to be for them so far. They tied the ball game. Third and ten. I formation. McAllister in motion. Back to pass goes fine. Looking to his right to O'Neill. Doesn't have him. Looks left. He has a man. It's Sherwood. He has blockers. He's across midfield. Down into Falmouth territory. A big play for the Red Raiders. First down, Sherwood. You got to like fine patience there. Very, very good setup on the screen to O'Neill and coming back to the tight end in the flat. Exactly what we talked about at the beginning of the second half that Barnesville had to do to get their offense going. That is the end of the third quarter. We have 10 minutes to go to decide who will win the Barnesville Falmouth Thanksgiving Day game. We'll be back after this. TCI Cape Cod Communications would like to thank the following companies for their sponsorship of this telecast and join them in wishing the Barnstable Red Raiders and the Falmouth Clippers the best of luck in this classic matchup end in 1993. Noman Copy, 94 Barnstable Road, Hyannis. Bell Tower Mall, Route 28, Centerville. The Law Offices of Attorney Don Weber and Puritan Pontiac Isuzu GMC Trucks, Yarmouth Road, Hyannis. Whether you live or just play on the Cape, signs are everywhere leading the way to recreation and relaxation. But sometimes it can all be broken with startling impact. 
The law offices of attorney Don Weber in Hyannis concentrate on personal injury litigation. A call to attorney Don Weber doesn't cost you anything. Not calling could. Because when you're entitled to rightful compensation, it pays to avoid the wrong signs. Attorney Don Weber, 687 West Main Street, Hyannis, across from Barnstable High. Thanksgiving 1992 will be remembered as the game in the mud. The field gets muddier and muddier as the rain continues to fall. We're in the fourth quarter. The first play, the snap to O'Neal. He runs left. His feet gets him to the outside. He tries to cut. He breaks the tackle to the 45. Another tackle to the 40. 35 to the 30. Jason O'Neal is going to go all the way for a touchdown. An incredible run by O'Neal. Number 44, Jason O'Neill scored for Barcelona. He's had many great runs this year. That may be his best all year. What an absolutely incredible run by Jason O'Neill. Knocked off two blockers, didn't want to go outside, shook off two tackles, broke it back up the middle. That may have been the run and the score that put the arrow, if you would, in the Falmouth Clippers I'm game plan. And as O'Neill hits the end zone, the rain now falls harder than it has all game. It's snowing, John. <laughs> as Jason O'Neill looks back on his high school career, he may look back at that run as the most memorable and the most meaningful to him and his team. It puts Barstable up 12 to 6, the first play of the fourth quarter. And after that touchdown, Coach Spanky demands threw his headset down. He called a timeout. The Red Raiders have called a timeout as they head back out to the field. And looks like they're going to looks like they're going to kick the ball. Looks like they're going to kick the ball, Mark, and go for the one. I think that's a pretty safe play to call in this pouring rain. Um, if they go for two on the slick field, let's just go for the one, get the extra point, and if Falmouth scores, make them go for the two for the win. Okay. Swift to kick. He missed his first attempt. He'll try again. It is up. It is good. So Mike Swift gives Barstable a seven-point lead. They lead 13-6. to six. Boy, what a run by Jason O'Neill. He broke two tackles. First of all, the speed to get outside, the strength to break the two tackles, then the breakaway speed to hit the end zone. And on this field, John, his ability to change direction on a slick field and go back up the middle for a long run for a score for the Red Raiders is absolutely fantastic. What an unbelievable runner. He's really proved himself today to all the fans here. About 5,000 here watching the ball game on a, on, on a day that... Uh, we celebrate many things, and we have, and Barnstable is definitely celebrating right now with this score of six points from their big back this year, Jason O'Neill. He's been the man, and in the final game of the year, he comes through when they needed him most. Nine forty-four to go. Falmouth had the drive of the game, the last drive for themselves. Can they reach back inside and drive again down the field? They have to with 944 to go. And you mentioned that last drive was very important. If they don't drive here, the it may be the ball game. It, it could very well be the ball game. That touchdown may have taken the gas out of Falmouth's tank in order for them to be able to put together a drive right now to, to, to get a score. It's time for Bar Barstable's defense to show us what they're made of. As high as Falmouth was after they scored, they're now that low. Mike Swift to kick off. He's done well all game kicking. He does well again. Maderos takes it out to 20, across the 25, to the 30. Out across the 35, tackle there as he gets Maderos to the 36-yard line. Try the kickoff back. Tackle by... Robert Terramaco. Robert Terramaco, number 88, with the tackle. Pretty good field position, though, for Falmouth. 9.38 to go. They trail by 7, 13 to 6. We'll see if the Barnesville defense can regroup now, Mark. Maybe take that long run and turn it into some intensity to stop Falmouth right here. One of the front, the front three are the keys to the Barnesville's defense right now. Let's watch Donovan at nose tackle, see if he can plug some holes on the Clipper offense. The give to Maderos. He gets outside, but a great tackle there by Chris Driscoll. 
He had running room area. to the right. But right Driscoll, Driscoll with the high tackle around Madero's after a gain of about three yards, second down and seven for Falmouth. Paul is at the 41. Cold and rainy and three yards be as Barstow and, and Falmouth play. The flag is limp. There is no more wind here. We've had intermittent wind. Right now, there's none. It must be almost impossible to throw the ball at this point with cold hands and the wet ball. Second and seven. Kelly under center. The give to Josh Mann. He gets a couple of yards. It'll be second and six. Show it. The Red Raiders sideline screaming the to their teammates. Chris Driscoll. Third down. Getting the crowd involved. Third and six. John, John, I'm sorry. Excuse me. This is a very well, big play at third and two. six for the Clippers. To keep the drive alive, they must get the first down on this play. 8.54 to go. Clock running. We'll call it third and five. Kelly rolls right. He has room. He's across the 45 near midfield. It's going to be very close to a first down. I think he has it. Kelly, the ball carrier. Dugan Sherwood, tackle as we've mentioned many Sherwood. times today, on the tackle. No, they're going to give it to him. Not even going to measure. Looks, First down. Looks pretty close, but the official just cranked it up. Get that clock moving. 8.20 to go. Kelly, again, the fourth offensive back in the backfield with the ability to change direction and run. A good decision maker. He has definitely proved that today to us, and if we had to pick a most valuable player through three quarters, it would be Matt Kelly. five to go fourth quarter Kelly gives up the middle Valesig carrying ball tacklers with him he's still not down Number finally 40, he goes 40, down a good seven yard gain it's second and three tackle by Mill the weather is probably worse now than it has been all day seven be second and three 740 to go for Falmouth they need to drive down to score tie the game or go for two and win it are the Falmouth coaches thinking that far ahead now? If we go down the uh, score, do we go for two or do we go for the tie? Thank you. I think you got to go for the score first, John. Uh, get okay. the six on the board and then make the decision. I think they'll have, have to take a timeout and make that decision when the time comes. Second and a long three. Kelly gives to his fullback, Valesic. He has plenty of running room. He's in daylight. He's saved by Scott Rose. About 44, Valesic carry. Dave Valesic up the middle. First down, Falmouth. Only down, Scott Falmouth. Rose prevented a touchdown. The ball on the 27-yard well, yard line. And you know what made that play successful for Valesic was the movement of the offensive line up front. Just a simple dive right between the center and the guard. A beautiful, beautiful play that produces results for the Clipper offense. This rain is incredible now. Coming down hard. The wind has picked up. It's right in our face. First and 10 for Falmouth. 6.50 to go. They're getting into position. Kelly, the quarterback. The give to Mance. He has running room up the middle. Cut. Try to cut it back. But Kevin Houston, Houston. with a nice tackle there right after a gain down. of about four. Man. So the Falmouth, just as the Dr. last drive, Dana, picks up where they yards. left off, driving well again. If Kelly doesn't, uh, if Kelly breaks that tackle. Official timeout. Right. Right, <laughs> if Mance breaks that one tackle, he's got a lot more running room. Good tackle in the open field by the Barnstable defender. Six and a half minutes to go. Clock moving. Second and eight will give him two yards on that. Ball on the 24-yard line of Barnstable. Field goal is out of the question here. Barnstable just needs to dig in for three straight downs. Kelly, the give to the tailback. Up the middle. Down after a gain of two. Good hitting there by Kevin Houston and Chris Driscoll. Kevin Madero's on the carry. It's gut check time for the Barstable Red Raiders, John. The crowd is back into this ball game. They've been out for the first three quarters of the game. Now they're back in it supporting the defense. Hopefully the Red Raiders D can come through and make a stop of this Clipper drive. Six minutes to go. Now under six minutes. Third down, a long six. You don't want to say that if Falmouth stops them here, it's over. But you think it would be very tough for Falmouth to come back. Although Barnesville is pinned deep in their zone and fumbles and turnovers could happen. Well, first things first, third down. Kelly under center. We have movement stoppage of play. It looks like Barnesville may have made contact. No, they're clapping, so it looks like it will be against Falmouth. On the play. 
illegal motion. Foul with Mark. That is a huge penalty at this point. Not focused from the offensive front of the Clipper offense. A big penalty that may kill this drive for the Clippers. You mentioned in the pregame that, four, that 40 minutes of focus was the key, and that's an example. Ball is at the 28. The clock rolling fast for Falmouth. For Barstool, it can't move quick enough. Five and a half to go, under five and a half to go. The Red Raiders lead 13 to 6. It's third and 12 for Fallon. They need to get 12 yards and two downs to keep the drive alive. Otherwise, it may be all over. Kelly, the quarterback, maybe he'll roll out here. He's done that in these situations. Play action fake. Rolls right, looking to pass the ball. He throws across the field. It is incomplete. Pass incomplete. Fourth down. Chad Traveri there to break up that pass. Kelly looks like he's holding an extra large watermelon and just pushing it out timeout. there. He has no timeout. grip on the ball at this point. And Falmouth will call a timeout. This is the game. This is the play of the game. This is, John. Fourth and 12. They've got to go for it. You're three and six. You've got your uh, integrity on the line for this ball game. This is definitely a play which you have to get. You have to get a first down. If you don't, Barstable takes over. This could be the ball game. 5.05 to go in the fourth quarter. Barstable leads 13 to six. TCI Cape Cod Communications would like to thank the following companies for their sponsorship of this telecast and join them in wishing the Barnstable Red Raiders and the Falmouth Clippers the best of luck in this classic matchup end in 1993. Bon Repose, 106 Bassett Lane, Hyannis. Town Taxi, call 771-5555. Logo Sportswear, located in the Cape Cod Mall by Woolworths. And Dick Beard Chevrolet Geo Subaru, Ridgewood Ave, Hyannis. Holiday shopping is so convenient at the Bell Tower Mall. Choose some select beef at Bell Tower Beef, fresh lobster at the Lobster Trap, and specialty foods from Cape Cod Natural Foods to gifts for the home and loved ones available at Country Star, Annabelle's, and the Fabric Studio. For those special holiday parties, head to Pro Cuts and Tiffany's for a festive new look. On Sundays, enjoy brunch at Kerrigan's with Santa and his helpers. This holiday, put the Bell Tower Mall first on your shopping list. Route 28, Centerville. Five to go here in the game. Falmouth trailing 13 to six. Fourth down. This could be the ball game if the Barnstable defense can stop Kelly. Fourth down. Look for the rollout. Kelly under center. Straight drop back. Rolling left. Pressure by Barnstable. He gets away. Looking downfield. He fakes. Tackle there by Kevin Houston. Short of the Curry, first down. Curry. Barnstable Curry. will take Curry. over. Houston. The first down for Barstable. Uh, so with 4.55 to go, Barstable now, Mark, stay away from the turnover and keep the clock moving. That's exactly right, John. Keep the ball on the ground, force Falmouth to call their timeouts, use up their timeouts. So if they do get possession of the ball again, they have to work in a, in a quick manner. You're absolutely right. We probably will see the timeouts starting to be used by Falmouth. 4.55 to go. The Red Raiders just want to hold on to the ball. The give to O'Neill, right side. Stopped after a gain of two. Second down and eight. O'Neill carry. O'Neill has fumbled on a couple times this year. He had a big fumble against Weymouth, although Tackle it didn't come back to Plastic. haunt him. So Jason's going to be squeezing tight on this and ball Walker. with the clock moving. Sean, I think one of, the, one of the big things we have to think about is a player right now is saying to himself on bars that we have a seven-point lead. We need to protect the ball. Don't protect it as much as, well, we're just going to lie on it, let the clock run out, because Falmouth will take advantage of miscues and turnovers. Stay focused for the last four minutes of the ball game. That's the key, Mark. As you mentioned, mental toughness, 4-10 to go, fourth quarter. The give to O'Neal, up the middle. He has some room. He finds daylight and is close to a first Barry. down, about two yards short, third down and two. So Falmouth not calling timeouts. They probably wanted to get the stop here and get the putt and have the timeouts for offense. Now it appears if Barnes will get this first down, then they'll start using them. And third and two on the 28. Andy Milk, number 38. Scott Rose, both come into the game. Ian McAllister comes out. Third and two. 3.43. Barnstable may have to take a timeout here. They may be hit with a delay again. They've taken a long time. Now it appears they may have too many men on the field. 
They're hurrying up. See if they get the play off in time. They do. The flag on the play. Rose throws. It is complete to McAllister. He's down near midfield. Make it the 44-yard line, but a flag on the play. I don't think this is going to count. Let's see what the call is from the official. I think they may have had 12 men on the field, Mark. Yep. So the first, the pass for a first town will not count, and that's a big break for Falmouth. The clock stops with 3.23 to go in the game. The rain subsides a tad. And so now Barnstable will have the fourth down and long. John, a big break right there for the Clipper defense. A middle lapse in the Barnstable offense. Too many men on the field. Too participation by the offense. They had 12 men on the field. That's a big break for the Clippers. You, you really got to think there, Barnesville, it would have been a great play to call a timeout. At third and two, if they pick up that first down, they really control the destiny of this game. But instead, they pick up a big penalty, and they're way back to their own 15. It's not lost it down, but it's 15. Let's see right here if Barnesville comes up with another trick play. Maybe a quick kick, John. They've done that in the past. O'Neal comes out. Let's see what they do. Rose, looks like he may take the snap and punt. We'll see. He does. He goes back. He's looking to throw. He finds running room. He's hit hard at the 10 and driven back. Rose. Tackle for a loss. Larry Ferritter, the linebacker, does it again. Tackle by number 50. A big hit. Ferritter. It'll be fourth down and deep in their own territory. Barnstable will have to punt. Falmouth calls a timeout, and Mark, they're right back in the ballgame. Exactly. Now it's time management for the Clippers. They've called a timeout. They have to regroup, refocus on what their goals are, try to get into scoring position and make a score and go for two to win the ballgame. 2.47 to go. Of course, number one on Falmouth's wish list at this point is a block of this punt. Barnstable's energies now is to get this punt away no matter what. Mike Swift has done a great job kicking today, except for the one extra point he missed. He made the last one. He's punted well. He's kicked off well. Guys, now it comes down to one to punt for him. Parking lot behind the scoreboard. Thank you. Joe Kennedy scored first for Barstable. He made it six to nothing. Falmouth came back to score to tie to six. And then Jason O'Neill had one of the greatest runs of the year for him to put Barnes to one top, 13 to six. Fourth down. Again, the only thing Barnes will want, get the punt away. Swift will try. Maderos is by himself. He's kind of deep. The snap is short. Swift gets it away and gets a great kickoff. The ball bounces at the 40, down to the 44-yard line where Mike Donovan will down it. So what a great job by Swift. From his nine, he Swift kicks it to the 44. That's a 35-yard punt in these conditions. Line and deep in his own end zone, getting it out, forcing Falmouth offense to come out from their own, from the Barstable 44, mind you, with good field position. This is a key drive right here, John. The ball game will be decided in the next two, min two minutes and 45 seconds. Perhaps we were a little premature and speculating throughout the game, but now it does come down to this drive, it appears. 2.38 to go in the game. Falmouth needs to go 44 yards for a score. A field goal will do them no good. First and 10. Kelly, the quarterback. He fumbles. He gets it up, gives it back to Mant, and he has no gain. The period fell with moves on that play. No flag on the play. The ball carrier. It'll be second down to 10. Falmouth not calling a timeout. And Donovan. They're hiring up. 2.20 to go now in the ball game. Donovan gets off the field just in time. Kelly, the quarterback. The give to Maderos over the right side. He has room down the sideline. Rose pushes him out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. Knocks Maderos out of bounds. Boy, Maderos came close Fair there to breaking it to the end zone. He's out of bounds with 2.09 to go. First and 10, Falmouth. John, you can tell that Maderos wants line. to get in the end zone. First and 10 He's up Falmouth. for this game. The last On the possible 30. two minutes of the ball game are his. He may take control and give Falmouth the opportunity to tie this ball game and possibly win it. Let's, let's watch for the offensive backfield of the Clippers to make some moves and to score some points in the last two minutes. They need it, Mark. 2.09 to go. Kelly to give to Mant. Up the middle, strong yardage, good yardage. Down inside the 25 Drive to the 24-yard line. A gain of six. 
The clock continues to roll Locked under two minutes. Thomas with the hurry up offense. They make a late substitution. They have to wait for Larry Ferritter to get off the field. Kelly gives it to the tailback Maderos. He has room. He has daylight. And rolls with a great tackle at the 10. First down Clippers. Kevin Maderos has taken over on this drive. Two strong runs. And Falmouth is in a great position to score with 1.43 to go. First and 10. John Medeiros and the Clippers may want this game more than the Maderos Red Raiders. The, the defense is lacking in the backfield. The up front people are staying down. They're opening holes, and the Clippers are taking advantage. 1.38 to go. The clock running. First and 10 at the 11. The give is to Mann. He goes left, comes up the middle, hit hard by about seven tacklers. He's down near the six-yard line. Matt with a great run, kept his legs going, didn't stop when he was Tackle hit. His legs were driving, got an extra two rolls. yards out of that run. Clock continues to roll. Looks like Barnstable will not have a chance to come back if Falmouth gets in the end zone. That's part of the plan here by not calling timeouts. Kelly, the give to Madero's right side, a fumble on the field, and Kelly is there fumble for the, the recovery. The third time this half, that's right, happened. Kelly. The third time they fumbled. But they've gotten the ball back, and finally Falmouth calls a timeout. Time out, Third Falmouth. down. What great drama here, Mark, in the 104th meeting between these two clubs. John, even though the weather's bad and we're watching this ball game outside, uh, what a terrific Third. ball game to watch. You couldn't ask for a better one on Thanksgiving Day. The 104th game is truly one to remember. <laughs> no doubt about it. The series began in 1895, as we mentioned. The Thanksgiving Day games began in 1924. Falmouth leads the all-time series, 49 to 46. Barstable trying to close the gap today. The Thanksgiving Day series, Falmouth also has a three-game edge, 32 to 29. Falmouth won the first meeting, 16 to nothing. 104 tries later, we're right down to the end. John, it's time to get pumped up for both teams. It all comes down to 59 seconds to decide this ball game. This is what they've been fighting for the whole season. The players know it, the coaches know it, the fans know it. Maybe it's time for the Clippers to show and prove themselves as a legal contender in the conference with Barnstable. All year long, Mark, these situations have prevented them from getting the victory. But in the end, Ed Winslow probably doesn't care. Of all the games, he would want this to happen. This is the one. Spanky Demanche has never lost to Falmouth. This would be new territory for him. Third down. Ball's on the seven-yard line. 59 seconds to go. The clock really isn't a factor now. It comes down to downs. Watch Kelly for a run, John. They have gone up the middle with Medeiros and Mant most of the way. Let's see if Kelly does try to create something. Third and six. Kelly under center. Trying to draw Barnes to off sides. They give to Mant up the middle. He works his way through towards the end zone. He's in. Touchdown, Falmouth. Number 35, Josh Mant scores for Falmouth. The Falmouth Clippers are within one point of Barnstable. Do you go for one, get the tie, time or go out. for two Falmouth. and the win? That's Falmouth's last time out. Ed Winslow has been in this situation before against Barnstable. And now the pressure is on. What a great ball game we've had in this awful weather. 52 seconds to go. Josh Mant with the touchdown. John, I got to give the edge to the Clippers now. Just scoring with just 52 seconds left in the ball game. They've got to go for two for the win. They can't settle for the tie. The pride is on the line right here. It's time to win the ball game. And at last, we come to a situation where it is do or die. We request all fans to stay off the field. There's the trophy they're fighting for. The Selectman's Trophy. Len Gobiel is clutching it. He hopes it stays on the sideline that he is on, the Barnstable Red Raiders. The Falmouth Clippers have shown great heart in this game. Three and six coming in. They are three yards away from victory. Barnstable defense, if they keep the ball out of the end zone, the game should be theirs. Here it is. Kelly has Valesic, Maderos, and Mann in the backfield. The give to Mann. The fumble picked up by Kelly around left side. He's hit hard. He's in. He scores. Quarterback Joe Kelly 
has converted the two-point conversion. Falmouth has the lead. 14 to 13 with 52 seconds to go. Extra the crowd has gone crazy. Was good. Falmouth fans running all over the place. For the fourth time this half, the ball came loose. But for the fourth Four time, now, 14, the opportunistic 13. Clippers pounced on it. Kelly took the ball into the end zone. It seemed like from our vantage point, a swarm of tacklers were there, but they couldn't make the play. Kelly wanted the two-pointer. He wanted the win. He got it. Nice run by Joe Kelly. Got to give the guy a lot of credit. He's got some guts. Picks up the ball, breaks a couple tackles, gets in the end zone for the for the two-point conversion. Barnstable now must rely on the big play. They can kick a field goal to win it. Jason O'Neill, number 44, takes the field. The last time he touched the ball, he had one of the most electrifying runs all year. They need him again. John, if I were Falmouth, I would kick the ball away from O'Neal. Kick it on the ground, maybe a squib kick. Uh, keep the ball away from Neal in this, in this kickoff series. I think we can almost count on a, a squib kit of sorts. Of course, on the other hand, that does give Barnes some a good field position. A couple throws, a couple runs, and get them in position to score. 52 seconds to go. Falmouth leads 14 to 13. It's been a roller coaster of emotion on the Falmouth sideline. They were so up when they tied it. They were so down after O'Neill's magnificent scamper. Now they're back on top of the world with 52 seconds to go. Here comes the kickoff. Yep. It's straight ahead. O'Neill may get a chance. He does. He'll pick the ball up at the 21 yard line. He runs across the 25 to the 30, breaks the tackle down near the 40 yard line, still on his feet. Look at the heart before he's finally pushed down. The play took eight seconds. O'Neill brought down by Mont. 44 seconds to go. At the 36-yard line. The Red Raiders have to get their heads up, John. Some of the players have their heads down. They're, they're losing by one point late in the ball game. They've got to get keep their heads up, plan some offensive attack, get the ball toward the end zone for possibly three points. They need to go 63 yards in 44 seconds. 44 seconds to go in the, in the game. That is Jason O'Neill's uniform number. We'll see if he plays a part in this last 44 ticks. McAllister to the left. Driscoll to the right. Find the quarterback. Looks like he has a new jersey on. Play action fake to O'Neill. Looking downfield. Sherwood complete. He's hit hard after about a four-yard gain and thrown down. Barnes will ask and gets a timeout. They would have preferred to have a hurry-up offense on that play, but they didn't have the time. Notice Falmouth game gang four, tackling now, something six. we haven't seen the whole game. The Clippers up by one point. Uh, the the Barnstable's offense goes to the tight end in the flat, like we talked about at the beginning of the second half, and, and the Clippers are swarm tackling, which is good. 34 seconds to go. The Falmouth coaches are leaving their area where we are. We've been right next to them the entire game. The Barnstable coaches, I should say. They're heading down towards the sideline. 34 seconds to go. Falmouth has come back. They've showed great heart. All year long, they've had trouble scoring late. Coach Ed Winslow said, if we could have scored late more often, we would have had a good record. We have a good team. Second down and six for Barnstable. Only 34 seconds to go. Time is their enemy now. Fine under center. Back to pass, the draw to O'Neal. He slips and falls, he loses a yard. And Barnstable calls a timeout. 35 yard line. They were hoping the man could do it for him again. Sean, I don't like the call. I, this late in the game, 34 seconds left, a draw play on the ground with Falma's defense at the height of their game right line. now. I don't like the call. Third and Jason's seven. the man though that has brought Barnstable to victory this year. And I guess he's gonna be the one who's gonna win win the game for him today. We'll see what happens with third and seven. Ball in the 28. Barnstable is ready to go. They're off the center, but the officials say wait till Falmouth is ready. Here come the Clippers. Third 
Third down and seven. Only 28 seconds to go. Barstable needs the first down to get that clock stopped and more importantly, get the drive moving. Back to pass. Nice first pass. down, Driscoll. Pass from Fine to Driscoll is complete for a first down. Clock is stopped with 23 seconds to go. Fine hit Driscoll and they convert on that third down opportunity. Barnstable quickly up to the line. Clock has yet to move. Clock has yet to move. And Fine will spike the ball with no time on the clock. They lost two seconds. The clock should move there when the chains Fine are moved, John. Yeah, once the Second chains down. were set, the clock should have been moving, and it wasn't. Fine actually spiked the ball with 23 seconds to go. Two seconds then clicked off the clock, and they're now 21 to go. They need to go 51 yards in 21 seconds. They need a big, big play soon. Second and 10. The pitch to Rose. The pitch to O'Neill. He goes outside. He has running room across the 45. The 40. Out of bounds at the 35-yard line with 14 seconds to go. Knocked out of bounds. Make it the 36-yard line. A gain of 15. And the crowd scampers down. What a great run by Jason O'Neill. Their bread and butter man for the Red Raiders this year. If, if I were Barstool, I'd go back to him, get into field goal position. 14 seconds left. You never know what can happen, John. First and 10. Only 14 seconds to go. You think Barnstable really only has time for two more plays. They have to be big. Back to pass goes fine. He slips. His knee is down, and he is down. Fine goes down. Good call. A bad break for the Red Raiders. Fine had good protection, but the footing, which we've talked about, of course, is a factor, comes into play at the, at the, the one moment when Barstable needed the big play. 10 seconds to go, 14 to 13. The Red Raiders call a timeout. Mickey Fine screams for a towel. You think something we both need right now, John? Oh, jeez. Second down and 15. It's not so much picking up the first down now, it's getting into field goal range. How much confidence does Spanky DeManch have in place kicker Mike Swift? John, if I were Mike Swift right now, I'd be getting loose on the sideline, trying to stay loose in case number 32 gets called in the game for the Red Raiders to kick that three-pointer. He's stretching out all by himself. But Barstable first has to get there. They have three receivers to the right. Looks like a Hail Mary pass of sorts to get them in field goal range. Fine. Back to pass. Stumbles. Looking downfield. Throwing deep. A host of receivers are there. It's incomplete with three seconds to go. It will come down to one play. John, I don't like that call either because uh, instead of throwing it up, way, uh, up in the air and trying to make something happen with a Hail Mary play, I like the short pass better. Getting 10, 10 or 12 yards, getting set up inside the 24 field goal. With these conditions, Barstool may have to get to the 10 for any realistic field goal hopes. Now, that field goal won't even happen. It's either a touchdown or nothing for the Red Raiders. The ball is on the 42-yard line. Third and 15, three seconds to go, Falmouth by one. Final will need to throw the ball 50 yards to get into the end zone. He waits. He throws. He gets no handle on the ball. It's up in the air. It's knocked around and intercepted at the 21-yard line. The game is over, and the Falmouth Clippers have won. They came in three and six in underdogs. They go away four and six and winners of the 104th Thanksgiving Day game between Barnstable and Falmouth. Congratulations, Belmont! Yeah! Yeah! Uh, we've been together as a team all year, and uh, 
We just kept on believing and working hard, and we've come up short in a lot of games, and this game we came out on top. Coach, your offensive line was amazing today. They did a great job. It all came from the heart. Coach Rainey does a hell of a job with those guys. They work every day. Those guys don't get any of the, the, the uh, print on, on uh, the papers, but, geez, they did a hell of a job. They get the print today right on here on this field. The hell of a job. Any doubts? Were you definitely going to go for two? Yeah, we had to. That's because we don't have a kicker. <laughs> It's been our pleasure here at Channel 11 to bring you this great game for Barnstable fans. Unfortunately, it didn't come out as a victory. But for all of us here at Channel 11, our sideline videographers, Andrew Wilson, Jeff Dieter, Suzanne Mikowski down on the field of reporting, Mark Hoops, thank you very much. A great job on color. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure being here. I really enjoyed it, and I hope everybody enjoys it who's watching uh, tonight's ball game on Cape 11. <sighs> I'm John Butchergross. It's been a pleasure bringing you this great Falmouth Barnstable game. The final score from Leo Shields Field, the Falmouth Clippers 14, the Barnstable Red Raiders 13. Side. He has running room across the 40, across the 50. He's in the territory, the 35, the 30, down near the 20. He's breaking. He couldn't go all the way. He's out of bounds at the six-yard line. He's going to pull back up the middle, and he's in for the score. So Joe... the quarterback under center the give to man he's in the end zone for a touchdown for the first time we see a lot of emotion on the sideline of the Falcon Clippers the Definitely going to go for two. Yeah, we had to. That's because we don't have a kicker. <laughs> 